we go, here we go. Hello, hello, hello. Call you're on the air. What's your name? My name is Mark Sargent, and I'm a flat earther. Yeah, there it is. What Thanks. was that ruckus? Thanks for calling, man. Our phones are not dialing out. That's all right. And and I, I got this text from you, and I'm, I'm dialing. I'm getting, like, numbers of people I have no idea. And then you say, oh, sorry, it's a typo. And it's like, okay. Typo, yeah. Yeah. That double yeah. zero got me, and that ruined everything. But, oh, we're so glad to have you on the air. Thanks for calling in, man. Oh, no, happy to be here. Right, uh... <laughs> How are things in Mark Sargent's world? It, things are going very well. Uh, I just finished the draft to my second book and sent it off to the publisher. Wow. And so I'm crossing my fingers that everything will go well and we'll have it before the conferences in the fall. It is called, so the first one was called Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit. And this one is called, it's part of a trilogy. And this one's called Flat Earth Clues, End of the World. Wow, yeah. okay. Yeah. Why? Why is it the end of end of the world? End oh, of the I world. Um, well, initially, it's it's it was started out as kind of a play on words because just yep. about everybody that attacks flat Earth say, well, you know, give me a picture of the edge of the world. Have you ever been to the edge? The end. You know, is there an end to you know to this thing? And um, but it was mostly because National Geographic, when we did the interview, were asking a lot of uh, really weird, dark questions, which was, will flat Earth usher in a new dark age? Is it possible that when people, when if enough people get involved in flat Earth, you know, that they'll attack science and everything will go backwards and we'll go into the 1800s or whatever it is or the new crusades? And I'm thinking, well, probably There's no running not. water and anything. Yeah, like that. you know, so, de so dogs what, and cats so living together, mass hysteria. Yeah. Ooh, it's already well, happening little, now. Little, 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 I like a little Bill Murray quote there. So, well, thank um, you, thank you. What is beyond the ice wall? Yeah, when does it stop? How, what, when well, no, well, I, I think it stops with a barrier. Uh, I think that was what Admiral Byrd and the United States Navy and the Soviets figured out in 1960, that there is some sort of, like anything, you know, when if you're really, really tiny inside a snow globe, eventually you will run into something. And whatever, you know, what this dome is made out of, take your, take your pick, you know, high frequency, force field, unified field, heavy elements, heavy water, whatever it is, we can't punch through it. So, okay. but it's out there a ways. I mean, it is out there thousands of miles off the Antarctic coast. The, the most so common what, mis do we have, does, does, has anyone been brave enough to go out and get a photograph of this? Oh, sure. And, sure. And, the, United, we, the, United, and, the United States Navy did in the, in the late 1950s. And that's where and everything so went, went south. You, you have, you have access to that photo. Can, can well, you yeah. share that photo with our listening audience? If, if I had access to that photo, I'd be on um, the world wouldn't be what we know it now. It'd be completely different. Uh, I mean, if, I if, okay. if, let, let me put it a different way. If the United States military was the one that took the photo, do you really think they're just going to hand it over to Time Magazine? <laughs> no. Well, that's true. No, that's they're going to be like, well, oh, you true. know what? Let's file this away. You know, remember that Indiana Jones thing where they put it in a, in a crate and then put that crate in the middle of this huge warehouse full of crates with the Ark that's of the Covenant? That's where the photo is. Yeah, that's where the photo is. With the Ark of the Covenant, okay. basically. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. I oh, gotcha. Yeah, and yeah. half of that guy's melted face. Yeah. <laughs> so we were. So, so, so good. A thousand? Did you say thousands of miles inland to the edge of the? Oh world? yeah, yeah, yeah. The the Antarctic coastline would just be the beginning of the edge. Uh, meaning, and that's the most common misconception. I mean, um, the the movie Thor with the whole Asgard cosmic waterfall thing that did us no favors at all, because it's like, okay, well, the edge of the world is obviously where the oceans just start endlessly flowing off the edge. And it's like, no, 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 no. And the Antarctic coastline is where it begins, and then thousands of miles inland is where the barrier would be. And that's where I would put it if I was going to build it, because there's nothing out there in Antarctica. You know, there's no animal life, no plant life, no indigenous population. Though, and it, the, the climate's horrible. In fact, most people don't even know that most of Antarctica sits at 14,000 feet. It's a huge plateau of ice. And, you know, altitude sickness kicks in at about half that, 7,000. So, and it's getting small. It's getting smaller according to global global warming or, or climate uh, change. I mean, and by the okay, way, so, I I actually believe in in climate change. I mean, I you know it used to be called global warming, but I believe in it because in the the flat Earth model, isn't it easier to, to isn't it easier to understand greenhouse gases if it's actually a greenhouse, you know, with a, with a physical structure? Just saying. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, you hear that? I'm just saying. See. Yeah. So we, the, the last time we talked, we we said we would we would we would cover the Elon Musk SpaceX stuff. Oh, okay, okay. And you you wanna... have you have a lot of dirt. 
Oh yeah, I yeah. I wrote. I dedicated almost an entire chapter to him in the book. Um, one of the chapters I have. In fact, here, let me rattle off just for you guys. Almost an exclusive, anyway. Uh, here's here's the chapter list for the book. Wait, ready? this is an exclusive. Yeah. You ready? Wait, hang on. Do I have the exclusive thing, Todd, or do you have it? I don't have it. No, you have what, what is the exclusive? Oh, uh, you mean like a da 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 da? You know, like a like yeah, a. Yeah, we have a thing. We have a yeah, thing, but it's it's the it, station's falling apart. It's a, well, you, know. you could always play. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, a it's a UHS exclusive. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> that was perfect. What a, did go you ahead. used? Did you used to work for Fox News? Because it's like straight out of what they do, like every fifteen that minutes. That is close, isn't it? It's like <laughs> alert. To say that's true. <laughs> Tom Cruise not disclosing how tall he really is. You know. <laughs> Some um, source to say you have to always you know. Yeah, source to say that or after. S- so uh, okay, so the 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 book title is called Flatter's Clues Into the World, and the the chapters are ready. Here we go. Chapter one, right. look away. Chapter two, how we got here. Chapter three, experiments, test, observe, repeat. Uh, chapter four, the questions. Chapter five, there's only thirteen of them. Uh, how NASA failed. Chapter six is word on the street. It's basically a gossip column. No, chapter seven is behind the curve. Goes over the documentary. Chapter eight is subject matter experts. Chapter nine is friends of the family. Chapter ten, which we'll get into in a second, is Elon Musk, enemies of the state. Basically, everybody on the outside that really hates Flat Earth and, and actively goes out against this. 11, uh, religion and why Flat Earth matters to you. 12, the Flat Earth problem. And 13, end of the world. So, Elon okay. Musk. Um, I like it. I like it. Quick, quick, quick question. Yeah. This is very important. Yeah. Are we in the book? <laughs> the radio station? Yeah, are well, we in the book? No, you know, not, me, not really. Aaron, I mean, Aaron, I, Todd, I, and Jason, are we in the book? Well, no, no, but I, I like you guys a lot. I mean, it's, Dang it. it's nice. But <laughs> okay, I, go ahead. No, no, Sorry. I mean, it, it, had I known you longer, I think I, we would eventually, you would have eventually gotten in there. But these were people, okay. the, most of the people like in Friends of the Family were people I had, I had been hanging out with since about 2015 when this thing started. Okay. So, but no, no, no offense to you guys. I mean, you know what? If in the trilogy, I'll tell you what. If we, if I actually make it to the third book and and I get to publish it and everything, then I absolutely will include you in the in the third Excellent. book. Excellent. Right. right. So you well, will you, you will be in you... Re- Return of the Jedi. All right. So, so <laughs> that's that's, a, that's What about that's good. all the conspiracy theorists that are going to have a problem with you just having thirteen chapters? Ooh. Oh yeah, I know. I did that Ooh. deliberately. I, I and oh, that's just did. kind of a little did nod. You? To the conspiracy. I mean, I suppose I could have gone for broke and made like 33 chapters, but no. I mean, 13 is just fine, and and that's it's just, and seriously, it's done because it's a conspiracy book, and okay. that's I mean, I, I, but I had to like avoid like for example the uh, the very first chapter, look away, and and I had to hire an illustrator for this. Uh, there initially I was going to have him uh, have a guy peeking out underneath a blindfold. However. That's way too Masonic because Masons use blindfolds and there's also that whole one eye, you know, the, the all seeing eye. The all seeing eye. And so now it's just going to be a man in a blindfold. And it's like, okay, because that's, that'll, that'll work just fine. Anyway, back to Elon Musk, who is Here by, we go. by far Mr. the. Mr. The, Tesla. Oh, uh, Mr. Tesla. Mr. Okay. PayPal. First off, yeah. Okay. First off, Elon Musk has nothing, almost nothing to do with the companies that he's in now. He made it. You have asked the average person on the street. They'll say you ask him who who started uh, Tesla and they'll say, oh, Elon Musk. Did. No, no, no. Elon Musk. Did. He bought Tesla. That's all he did. It'd be like saying, did Mark Cuban uh, invent the Dallas Mavericks? No, he did not. He just purchased them outright. He and- didn't. It's <laughs> funny. Well, I mean, Dallas is a fairly new team by comparison, but no, he, he came in and, and just bought them and, and then sat in the stands and yeah. yelled at reps. But yeah. Elon Musk, he bought Tesla and took, you know, took over the stuff. And then uh, he started up SpaceX. He's not an engineer. He's not, you know, he's about as much into SpaceX as Bill Nye would be into SpaceX. He just, okay. the government, he's he, the money he, guy. The what? Yeah, he's just, he's just money the guy. money guy. Yeah. He made like, he he like Bezos. He's he's a developer. That's all he did. He helped yeah. program the the program which we all know as PayPal, and he of course got in on the ground floor before it went public, and so I think he had somewhere up of the upwards of like ten percent of the entire stock of it when that thing went public, and of course he became a billionaire almost immediately because yeah, PayPal is like the bank you know bank to bank transaction thing for the for the common man. So, so what's the deal with Elon Musk? What, 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 okay, why, so why okay, you, so here's why? the deal. It, it, Elon Musk was basically off our radar for radar for quite a while. Yes, he made all sorts of 
weird promises before he he sent the roadster into space. Uh, he said, but just in fact, there was a great headline in the New York Post. You can look it up. It says Elon Musk is a total fraud, and I had been saying that for at least a year. And finally, they wrote this, and they said he's never followed through with anything he's ever ever done. He said he was going to, to make a super plane that was going to go from the United States to China in two hours and cost as much as a business class ticket. Uh, he said he was going to make an underground high speed rail system from Los Angeles to San Francisco. It never even started. Uh, he's going to solve the Puerto Rico hurricane power problems with some solar arrays that he, with some help of the government. He never even started. He's going to save those kids in the cave, that soccer team, you know, with his submarine. Never did that. And then accused everyone from, of doing it wrong. Uh, but the thing that really caught my eye was in 2017 when he, in the beginning of 2017, he says, oh, yeah, I'm going to send two tourists around the moon and back by the middle of 2018. And I was like, whoa, whoa, that is one aggressive timeline, considering you don't have a rocket, you don't have a capsule, you don't even have the people, you don't have pilots, you have, you have nothing, and you're going to do this in, in 15, 18 months? It like well, lof lofty ambition. A lofty. He's a <laughs> it was ridiculously he a aggressive. To his, in his defense, he's a dreamer. And by the way, that article that Elon Musk is a total fraud came yeah. out of the New York Post. What did I say, New York not Times? The, not, the, not the New York Times. Oh, I'm sorry, New York Post. Fake news. Fake news, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fake news. Okay, so that was the first thing that caught my eye. And then all of a sudden, I got a, uh, an email from somebody showing, it was, it was, I just woke up one morning and somebody had sent me a snapshot of the Roadster in space. And I, I, you know, I was groggy as I get up. It's like, oh, what's this BS? And I'm looking at him going, well, there's no way this is, I go, I go to Jaron, who photoshopped this? This is, this is pretty good, you know? And, and then somebody said, no, dude, that's a live link. And I go, live to what? It's like a live broadcast. There's supposedly a Tesla in space right now. I'm going, get the hell out of here. So I, we, we break this thing down and oh my Lord, we tore this thing apart in about five hours and to start ready. Okay. So why, and here's why it was absolutely impossible. It's basically the impossible car. First off, they said this was his car from his garage. He, he even admitted on camera. He said, oh, I made no modifications. I just put it on top of a capsule and I sent it off into, into space, put it up in orbit on the way to Mars. It was going to circle the earth a few times and then go off on its way to Mars. And, yeah. he, and he shot it up there, supposedly, and we'll get to that in a second. I don't know how much time we have, but we, uh, we, he shot it up on a Falcon, what's called the Falcon Heavy, a Falcon Heavy yeah. main rocket with some booster rockets on the side and put a big capsule on the top of it that opened up, that, you know, that cracked open and supposedly showed Yeah, I know. I watched the whole thing live. It was incredible. Yeah, it was it. incredible. Every, Absolutely incredible. It. And, and that's what it is. It's incredible. There's no way physically, from the laws of physics, this thing should have ever done what it did. And I'll, I'll explain in a second. So first off, while I'm watching this thing, I'm, I'm seeing no degradation of anything that's happening. First off, if, if this thing was exposed to the vacuum of space, every pressurized system in there would have exploded immediately. Uh, starting from, I don't know, the transmission fluid, the water washer fluid, the brake fluid, the transmission fluid. Um, remember, it was, it's an electric car, so there's no oil or anything like that. So no gasoline. Um, the Oh, I'm sorry, the four tires... <laughs> on it would have immediately blown up as tight a tight as a drum and then detonated and just wrecked the fiberglass uh the the windshields not just the front but the side ones if, if you've ever seen anyone on a cold day put some dumbass that throws like hot water warm water on a windshield <laughs> and it cracks how do we explain There's the tires though on, how do we explain the tires though on the mars rover well the mars rover tires are supposedly metal so, and then the same okay. thing with the with the moon rover. Uh, if you believe it, it's like a it's like a mesh titanium metal, which I don't buy for a second. Anyway, so uh, aside from those things, right? Uh, so so the side windshields should have spider web. The front windshield should have been destroyed. Uh, okay, what else? Uh, the dash. Should why, have... what, but why why would it why would it have been destroyed if, if if it wasn't pressurized? So in other words, if if something's pressurized, then it then it then it, then it needs to the power. The, okay, to, so the the difference it needs between needs to push back on the pressure, but if it's not pressurized, then it's just going to accept the vacuum. Everything's pressurized, though. Everything in a car. I mean, they would have had to. If he says there's no modifications to the car, then every system which is enclosed. I mean, the, the battery acid. Well, think of all the the battery on this thing. Remember, it's an electric car. The battery maybe acid. Took, alone, but maybe he took all that stuff out. No, he said he didn't make a damn change to it. Not a, not a one. And they would have had. It would have taken a, a solid month to prep this car for space and he said it never ever happened but okay so let's say let's say he just it was a it was a, just a flaw in his part in his speech where he didn't you know it was like oh i made a mistake and actually they prepped the hell of it fine sure 
All right, if that's the case, then let's look at the other obvious things that were, I don't know, the things that were missing. How about, how about this? Um, there were no logos on this car at all. And you can go back and look. Remember, we're talking about a public company and a private company, Tesla and SpaceX, right? One's public, one's private. And this thing should have been decorated like NASCAR. It should have been wall-to-wall -wall endorsements. The, the whole side of that car should have said SpaceX. The whole front should have been like a giant Trans Am. It should have said Tesla. I mean, the, there shouldn't have been a, anything but logos. This is an advertising gold mine, right? And not to mention, why are you sending the freaking convertible up there? Why not send your flagship, the four-door S-Series, the sedan, four seats? Instead of that, even the mannequin didn't it's, have a it's, single logo. It's look. an interesting argument that you're making, but I, but I, I, don't, I don't see... The importance of having logos all over the car. Well, you can't. It's America. It that we like we live off. for marketing stuff. I mean, every if you can. I mean, every corporation would have killed to do marketing for this thing. I mean, think of this. He could have. But, his, sold. I, but I believe I believe his goal was to to expand his brand. No. Yeah. Okay. You know, fine. Not, expand not his brand. Where's his logo? Why take the Tesla logo off the car? Why pull every? He want. They were trying to fake space on the cheap. That's all they were trying to do here, which is, can we convince the public we watch social media in real time and we say, okay, how far can we take this? And all of a sudden you start reading things like, oh, hashtag, is this real? Hashtag not buying it. Hashtag fake. You see enough of those like, oh, okay, <laughs> we got we to pull these things back. I mean, think about it. If he could have done cross marketing, he could have put, instead of that stupid generic mannequin, why didn't the mannequin have any logos on it? You could have replaced it with, oh, let's see, let's just do Disney for the whole thing. A Stormtrooper, Boba Fett, Iron Man and Groot in the back, that thing would have paid for itself. In just, well, just I, think, from... I don't think he was worried about paying for it. I, I don't think that was the issue. Yeah, really? And, a, billion, you, a billionaire it, does not make... care about money? Come on, you, man. Well, you make an interesting argument, man, but I do think that, like, I think his whole goal was to just promote the brand. He wasn't and, and promoting. That, was that was just it. Okay, okay, I got one more for you. Fine, he was just promoting the brand, even though yeah. he wasn't. You know, there was no, okay, if he was promoting the brand, and Patricia, Patricia Steer figured this one out, and I was very proud of her for doing this. She goes, she goes, hey, she goes, after it was over, why weren't there car commercials running on this? She goes, why wasn't there a banner in every Tesla dealership showing this image, this profile shot of the Roadster in space? There are car companies that would have lied, cheated, and, and, and killed for this sort of advertising well, dollar. And a, they there are no Tesla dealerships. You, you order it online. Period. No, 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 there's Tesla I mean, dealerships. What, uh, okay, fine. And, if, and if, it, was if, all, it was all over their website, so... If, if well, of course, it had to, to be. I, it had to be on the website for a short time, of course. But I, lo I, lo I love you, Mark. But I got to push back on this one a little bit. I have to push back what? a little bit. I what? just, I just can't see. I don't see the validity in your argument that there were no logos on there and there were no pictures of it in a dealership. Well, because you, as a corporation, would know. You, there are marketing people that would have jumped all over each other to try to maximize this thing from a marketing standpoint. Fine, fine. If you okay, you don't like the marketing thing. I got one more for you. Ready? It's go, the go, okay, it's go. the ultimate misdirection, and that was the booster rockets themselves. First off, the so you had the Falcon Heavy with the car on top, and you had these little booster rocket things on the side. Mm -hmm. And they supposedly, and uh, you know, if you saw watch it drop off, these two booster rockets define everything that we know as engineering. These two bo booster rockets fall back after launching with some fuel yet let, and go all the way back down to Cape Canaveral in Florida and land right next to each other, side by side at the exact same time, using some sort of pulse detonation rocket technology, which we yeah, don't it's have. Three times now, right? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. It's yeah, awesome. yeah, you've seen it on TV, right? Yeah, it doesn't exist outside of, what was that movie? Uh, Battle for Los Angeles. That's where they stole the idea from. It's like, okay, you drop it at free fall speed and less than a mile up, you kick in these pulse detonation uh, uh, rocket engines and you land them right next to each other. Okay, first off, from a safety concern, no aircraft ever, ever, ever land right next to each other. But the reason they did it is because well, they had to t let the, the public is, I'm not going to say they're dumb, but they're, they are simple in that regards. And that is, if we don't land them right next to each other, the people aren't going to know which rocket is which, unless we have a big number one on one side and a number two on the other side. So let's land them the literally they side like by land side. Land them like a thousand miles away from each other or something like that? No, they, they, they should have been, la they should have landed... First off, they wouldn't, shouldn't have even landed at the same time. 
They should have had one drop down and then another one drop down, I don't know, five minutes later or three minutes later. They literally touched down within, I don't know, two seconds of each other, right next to each other. Even helicopters don't land right next to each other. Even in times of war, they space themselves out. Oh God! But but that was in the misdirection. You're getting worked out. But you don't think you don't think that we have we don't you don't think our technology is advanced enough to where they could actually sort of no. And they they and I I've seen it again. I've seen it. Yeah. And 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 they don't land exactly at the same time. And they don't land at exactly the same spot they took off. There's a slight variation. So they landed in the same that, in the same frame on the same pads. And oh yeah, by the way, why is NASA? That, why did they? Why did they land? Our, but, Sorry, Go I got to interrupt. Why did they land at Kennedy? They are a direct competition to NASA. NASA gets fifty-four billion dollars a year to keep these guys out. Why are they being allowed? Why is SpaceX landing in Kennedy launch pads? In fact, not only are they landing there, they had SpaceX logos painted on the Kennedy ground. What? When does this happen? But here, no, that's not even the misdirection. The misdirection is, so you're following the boosters, you're following the boosters. I got to tell you, from a production standpoint, even I missed it for like three or four hours, which is, okay, you're following the rockets. They're going, this is amazing. These two rockets are going to, you know, land side by side right next to each other after launching this thing in space. And then all of a sudden we cut to profile of car. There it is in front of the earth. Well, yeah. that's a problem because what happened to the Falcon Heavy? In a mirror, this, the, the booster rockets, that's not what the, put the car up there. It was a giant rocket called the Falcon Heavy with a big capsule on the top. And that thing slowly cracked open like an egg and released the car. Well, when that happens, like we saw with Apollo or ever, all the other stuff, that thing should have been, that giant rocket should have been tumbling backwards slowly towards Earth. They had three cameras on that car, one in the front one in the, and one in the side and one in the rear. And, and that thing spinning, that rocket would have been easily visible. And there was no sign of it anywhere. It was gone. It was like the Falcon Heavy never even existed. And everybody missed it. Everybody missed it. And that's because from a production standpoint, it was brilliant. Which was, let's show the boosters, show the boosters. Perfect touchdown. Go to car. Don't even mention the Falcon Heavy. And the general public just never even saw it. It's brilliant. Wow. So watch watch yeah, it yourself. You there what? is no Falcon Heavy. The Falcon Heavy just vanished. The biggest you know what, though, Mark? Yeah. You, you, uh, you're going to have an opportunity to do this with Bezos here pretty soon. Mr. Sergeant. Oh, yeah? Oh, I, Sarge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm messing with Todd. I, I told him to call you Mr. Sergeant. Oh, no, that's okay. Give, give you, can call, you can tell me whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, you know, Musk, if you've noticed lately, he's kind of out of the news. Well, he's got nothing I mean, left. For the most part, there's yeah, there's so nothing left. And by the way, the, the I, 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 but let me let me let me throw one more thing, which just infuriated us when he did that press conference after the Tesla was in space. And by the way, why'd you cut the feed when it was when you were supposedly leaving Earth's orbit to go to Mars? You had perfect That's HD broadcast it. footage, <laughs> and as it's heading towards Mars, not even heading, it's still in Earth orbit. It's like, oh, we ran out of battery power. That's it. Good night, everybody. Roll credits. It's like. What, what are you talking about? You, 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 what, it didn't go snowy at all? No, when, when Elon was on the ground, his quote was, was absolutely priceless, and I should have put this in the book. He says, you know it's real because it looks so fake. That's literally verbatim. And, it's like, <laughs> and, I, and I listen to this, I'm going, you should never, ever allow this man to be put in front of a camera or make quotes like that. It is yeah, just embarrassingly right. bad. No, he is, right. he is a freaking... Uh, by the way, uh, sorry... Um, uh, what happened to the two tourists that were supposed to go around the moon and back in, in 2018? Never happened. It's the middle of 2019. The rocket was never built. The capsule was never built. The th project was never started. And then I think it was like three months ago, he said, whoa, no, no. And in, in a couple of years, I'm going to send like uh, this Japanese guy and like 12 people around the moon and back. It's like 12. What, what vehicle are you using for this? We don't even have a shuttle. That could right, this, do that. Right. this is fascinating, and I think this is a longer conversation. Sorry. <laughs> and I wish we'd have gotten you on the phone a little bit earlier. We are running out of time. That's okay. That's right. No, you know, I'm, I'm glad to caught you guys. From nine to nine to eleven Central Standard Time. Okay. And it is almost eleven, so I got to get out of here. But uh, the next show coming up on KUHS 102.5 FM is Radiopedia. And Mark, if you'd like to stay on the line, I will guarantee that Brian Caldwell will talk to you for an hour because well, I, he is he's super into this kind of stuff and he does radio shows about this all the time he's he's sort of like our um he's our art bell he really is oh okay i, I, no I, I don't know it. if he's i can talk art. for an hour but I, I can talk to him for a little bit sure Ooh, okay i think you can talk for an hour bro hey Brian. Well, no 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 meaning he's i I, I, I don't i don't have time i don't have an hour to kill oh, i know i know what you mean oh, okay I, come in for a second brian brian's I'm coming in saying. i know we're going a little long I know we're going long, Brian, and I'm sorry, but Mark Sargent will talk with you 
we'll leave the phone up, and then you can just start talking with him, and I'll get out of your way. It's your show. Oh, okay. If you want to. It's Mark Sargent. But, it's the guy from the movie. You know he. He, he yeah, doesn't guy. have to yeah. talk to me. So what's your topic tonight, fairies? Uh, no, <laughs> it was Betty and Barney Hill. Okay, see, he good is. enough. He's going to talk about Benny and Barney Hill tonight. Alien but abductions, it's perfect it's for perfect. this. perfect, yes, it is. Well, it's Mark, a, it's a little Mark, older. Snow globe. Mark, I love you, buddy. Thank you for calling the well, show. Thank you. And Thanks, um, guys. let's let's chat next week. I'm going to I'm gonna wrap our show up. You stay on the line, okay? Okay, I'll, I'll stay on the line. Don't go anywhere. And if, if Brian wants to chat with you, he'll, he'll pick up the conversation. Okay. If he doesn't, then it, let it go. Okay. It's, it's, it's good for our station, no matter how you look at it. I know, it. that's awesome. fine. That's fine. All right, man. Thanks. Uh, t- take take care, Mark. We'll talk to you next week. Okay, thanks, guys. All right, bye. It's the right. record you need to know about. We'll see you next week, everybody. KUHS 102.5 FM. All right, we're done with that. Uh, record you need to know about. They just left the building. Uh, Mark, are you still there? I am still here. Hey, Mark Sargent. How you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and start this. You were talking about your book and stuff, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, I'm, I've got a new book coming out in the fall. Uh, I just finished mm-hmm. the draft on it. It is a sequel to Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit, which was turned into a video series, and then eventually a documentary that just got out on Netflix uh, a few months back called Behind the Curve. Uh, which, mm-hmm. which followed the entire flatter well, a, a big chunk of the flat Earth community through 2017. It was a lot of fun to shoot. But this book is called Flat Earth Clues: End of the World, which goes mm-hmm. into a lot of heavier questions. Which is, you know, there's a lot of scientists now that are coming at us and saying, uh, is it possible that if enough people, if flat Earth gets any bigger, is it possible, you know, we'll start burning down libraries and you know, lynching scientists and stuff like that. And I, of course, you know, it's no, no, but no, that wouldn't. We, we've done hundreds of regional meetups and conferences in more countries than I can count, and we haven't had a single incident. I mean, it's been really, really peaceful. So, uh, you know, I, but I, I understand like how National Geographic was up, was worried because they're a science-based network, no different than uh, the Discovery Channel or the History Channel, uh, or some of those. So, anyway, so yeah, that's what I'm currently working on. And cross, we're just. Well, fin- I, I think the argument was that, um, you know, like what we do with vaccines. Yeah. You. Oh, this is a better question. Let me ask you this. Yeah. What exactly would happen if the world found out that it was actually flat? How would that change everybody's life? No, that's a good question because at least one out of ten people ask me. It's like, well, you know, my wife doesn't listen to me and my kids hate me and I have to go to my stupid job in the morning. Why, what, what, what would change if, if, uh, if we found out that Flat Earth was, was a reality tomorrow? And I said, well, you may not – it may not affect you – immediately in the next 24 hours but over the next weeks and months it absolutely would and, and here's why um there are three it's a three-pronged thing i mean it affects everything we that we know uh first off would be uh academic which is think of ev- like overnight in every university that you can think of state and and um uh, international astronomy and astrophysics would shut down they, i mean they they would close their doors they, they couldn't reopen until they figured out what the hell it meant and then the remaining physical sciences like i don't know geology hydrology biology uh take your pick uh, they would all have to retool from the ground up i mean they'll all but isn't ac- that part of science though is that uh the go of it is to figure out the world and you change with the evidence uh, so if when, it was presented to them and there was evidence would they not change with it like they have with almost everything else uh, people protect their own interests i mean uh, scientific institutions aren't that much different from corporations and and in that i mean would you shoot your own foot if it meant you know the the truth would get out or shotgun yourself in the leg in this case um you know not not to pick on on some of the conspiracies of the past but you know the cigarette companies the lawyer rules still apply which is they apply for everything which is you deny even if you're guilty you deny you deny you deny until they absolutely positively have you until then you know you protect your interests uh you know big not to go off on the vaccination thing but look big pharma has a vested interest in keeping this going for as long as they can and we all know we all know the old sayings there's no money in the cure there's money um in the um the treatment so oh, i'm sorry this, well there's actually more money in boner pills than well else, yes but. that's that and and by the way how's that for an accident that was a blood pressure medicine which went horribly wrong 
But it didn't and, go horribly wrong. That's kind of what happened. Well, of, no, I mean, it was like, yeah, different. I mean, it went, it was terrible as a blood pressure medicine, but at the same time, it was like, oh, yeah, there's this weird side effect that seems to be pretty much consistent across the board, and they sold the hell out of it, which was which was great. They just rebranded it, which was which is awesome. Sorry. So that's academic. Uh, economically, uh, you're, you're talking about something that could shake up world markets. You'd have to suspend world world trading for several months. To figure out what it all means, I mean, you know, we would you? Uh, I don't think you, I don't think really? that would actually if, if happen. Donald, if Donald Trump yeah. got pneumonia tomorrow, the market would respond. If if, if is they respond, but they wouldn't stop. No, they wouldn't stop. But that's my point. That's just one guy. If, if the stock markets rise and fall on the stupidest things, and of course, I don't even believe that that we even get most of it. I think it's insider trading anyway. But world markets, you would that's, have that's to. That's a different thing, you, but yeah. And have, the market really doesn't have a stock market. Really doesn't have a lot to do with the economy. They're, they're kind of two different things. Uh, oh, come go on, ahead, go come on. on. If when the when the stock market tanked back in two thousand seven, two thousand eight, I, I know because I was in the the hiring sector at that point. Everybody froze. The nobody hired. Our business was in staffing, and we lost seventy five percent of our revenue stream in the first six months. And well, if you look at certain, in, I mean, you know, two thousand two. The majority of newspapers put on hiring freezes and wage freezes. I mean, and they weren't nearly as bad as they are now. I mean, well, companies I've, tend to do stuff like that. Well, I'm saying our company collapsed because of it, and a lot of our rivals collapsed. Wait, the, the point is, is that but a lot if, didn't. If, if the what? But McDonald's didn't have it. Well, no, McDonald's but that's that's affected. different. Walmart McDonald's caters to a whole nother. You're right. McDonald's didn't, and dollar stores didn't. And and Walmart didn't, uh, but there's a lot of corporations that really took a took a beating during that whole thing. I mean, not to mention, oh, I don't know, um, oh boy, uh, who's the big bank? I I can't even remember who they were. The big banking house that was sacrificed at the end. Um, uh, Goldman Sachs? Who are you talking no, about? no, not Goldman. No, Goldman Sachs came out Bear fine. Terrence? What are you? What are you? Well, the point was, is they're one of the biggest banks in the world. The the what been around before the Civil War. You know they were they were the sacrificial lamb in this case. Nobody was willing to merge or buy them out. It's like oh sorry, 160 years of, you know, great revenue gone in in a in a winter. But anyway, not the, not the point. The point is is that world markets would react if all of a sudden you told the entire world it's like oh yeah by the way it's not a globe anymore it's it's a uh, it's a snow globe whatever whatever version of planetarium terrarium whatever you want to call it. Uh, it would react and it would react violently because no one would know. Everyone was like, okay, what do these industries mean? You know, what does it all mean? Like, for example, and I, I said this in the, in the book, which was, do you still commit all the same atrocities you did before if all of a sudden you're literally one big family? That there's nowhere to go. This is the only game in town. This is the only boat and you're all on it. Do you still go and, and you know, do territorial wars? Over this, or does it change the dynamics? The point, the point here is that economics. I think everything would be. There would still be wars and everything else. Yeah, I mean, that's really would, but would it be the same? If, if there's a, if there's a majority of people who, for example, like yourself and others, David Weiss, whomever. Yeah. And by the way, why are you and David? You need to call David Weiss. Well, he's a, You guys have to work this out. W w you, you lost me. David. David Weiss is a friend. Why? I talk to him every other day. Ah, uh, that's not what I've been hearing, my friend. The, I think you need to call me. You guys need to work this out. Whatever this is between you guys is none of my business. David, you are, are you out. talking about the same guy? Yeah, from, you know, the rabbit hole. Deep uh, inside the rabbit hole? David Weiss? Yeah, yeah. What are you talking my about? He helped, he helped design my banner. I use his slides every single week. We, we've I've mm. never had a disparaging word with David. See, that, that makes me sad. What? But you, anyway. No, 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 uh, no, no. Don't, don't, you don't get off that easy. Why are you saying that David and I have a rift between us? It just seems that way. It's, it's, it just seems that way to me. I may be wrong. And you're absolutely but, wrong. Wait, why would you even come? Where does this even come from? Exactly. I don't know. It just when do you not do you not do, like David? It looks Weiss? like you're kind of taking shots at each other. I'm just saying. I I, I, mean, I don't know if you're trying like to create some sort of rivalry between the two thing. of us, but we yeah, a little rivalry thing going on. We've we've never seriously. I've gone to I don't know how many events with a guy, but we've never had a bad thing to say about you. If somebody and, and you would be the first to tell me this, I get emails from people all day long. Not okay. Yeah, not sure where. It, no, I've I've got nothing. I've never had a bad thing to say about David ever. In fact, I was I was so proud of him just a couple of weeks ago because he's the guy that got um, Owen Benjamin, to sh the the comedian, uh, to show up at our uh, thing that's coming up in Dallas. Oh, that's a big get, Owen. 
Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyway, so sorry. So Pat, let's go beyond the, the world market stuff because we'll right. agree. We'll agree to disagree here. I think it would be a a massive thing. You know, massive. No, no. My my point is that uh, real quick. Just one last question, yeah. and then we'll move on. My point is that right now there's a preponderance of evidence from people who believe it, scientists and you know normal people, yeah. that the world is not flat. Right. It's circular shaped, you know, not completely, but in that you, way. You mean globe. And yet, despite all of the evidence that people put out, there are, uh, there are people like you who would deny it. Yeah. So if you proved it, how would people still not deny it? They've been trained forever to believe that the world is round. Because I started out so as one of those. So it wouldn't really change. And by the way, we don't we don't even use the word round uh, because it's because it's not three dimensional. Globe, ball, sphere. If you want to say round, that's fine. But your dinner plate is round. Your hubcap is round. Dining room table is round, unless it's a square dining uh, room. Ah, we don't really want to get into semantics here. Well, yeah, actually, we do. <laughs> oh, okay. So we'll, we'll so, remember that for in the future. So go ahead. Okay. So if. No, because I have no problem with that because everybody in the flat Earth community started out as a globalist, for lack of a better term. We all okay. started out hating. I hated flat Earth when I started. I hammered on this thing for nine months at least, and and finally I just gave up. Like a lot of people, it's like you know everyone's got that breaking point. I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people, unless they get stuck in the denial and anger phase. And I say, I say, all right. I put it out to the hive mind. I said, look here's why I think it's, I can't prove the, the globe in a court of law anymore. That's, and that's what we're talking about here. Can I prove to you right now that the earth is flat? No, of course not. If I, if I could, I'd be super famous. But I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that the only place you have left to turn is some sort of flat model. And if you say, well, reasonable doubt isn't enough, I say, well, it is in court pretty much every day of the year. So, uh, but those people, yeah, but that's but, but, defined oh, if someone's guilty or not. That's not, you know, I mean, people go to jail all the time on reasonable doubt and they get uh, acquitted on reasonable doubt, too. Let me ask you this. Yes. So, um, there's several different, you've been in several different documentaries and news reports. Yeah. There's a famous one to where there was this experiment to where a uh, professor, what's it from, uh, University of California, one of those interconnected colleges. Yeah. He did an experiment to where uh, he took a little boat and put on there a sign that had three different markers yep, on there. Yep, like yep, yep. I was lines. there. I was there. That well, was, by the way, he's not, he, he's, he's not a professor. He was, he's just, he was just a guy from a skeptics group. His name is James Underdown, Jim Underdown. And okay. he was there as part of the skeptics group, and National Geographic shot the whole thing. And people and, and National Geographic gave no details on that. And I thought it was really interesting that you could see the far shoreline from twice that distance. And yet they were saying, well, obviously you can see the, uh, the stripes disappearing. It was the most unscientific thing I've ever seen. And on top of it, they got rid of the main test. That was their backup test. The main test was 10 miles away on the other side of the lake, on the Salton Sea off of Los Angeles, where they had these balloons, and they were going to raise them up at a certain level, and they say, okay, you can't see them until we get there. And we were shooting footage, and we were shooting at like 8 o'clock in the morning, and the thing was they couldn't figure out where to look because there was no distinguishing landmarks out there in the desert. And they were saying, well, we can't find it. We found it with our P900s. And we said, oh, yeah, we can find it. They're going, no, no, you can't see it. It's like, well, why in the world are you even, what are you even talking about here? We can see this. And National Geographic filmed the whole thing, and they completely edited out. It's like the experiment never even happened. Never even happened. We shot the whole, we have hours and hours and hours of footage on, on YouTube. And Nat Geo just cut the whole thing out. So, no. But my question going from that is, if you have, you know, I don't know, it looked like, at least from that, yes. that you were not accepting the evidence when you said you would if this experiment worked out. Yeah. So what can someone do to prove to you that the Earth is not flat? Perfect. What would it, what yeah, would yeah, it no, take? It's, that's good. I, and I get this. In fact, your, your station asked me this a uh, couple months ago, which was, okay, there's two things. One costs a little bit of money, and the other one doesn't. And it's like, no, and I know that the, you're, you're, the guys say, oh, yeah, we can, we can put you up on a, a rocket and SpaceX. Like, yeah, good luck. But, and I... I totally do it if if somebody could swing it. But there's two things you could do. One would be to put a 4K camera on the side of a rocket, face it down towards the Earth, and just launch it and not turn it off, no edits, just let the footage run, and eventually, you know, and send this thing out out of the orbit. 
And eventually you would see the Earth slowly but surely turn into a ball like you would expect and, you know, go off, you know, fade away into this little distance thing. And you keep the footage, you know, shooting for as long as you can. That has never been done in the history of space travel, which, again, I think is amazing. They always drop it off by like stage one or stage two. No footage has ever been done to that regards. That'd be the first thing. 4K footage, just keep the camera running. Do not edit it. Let us take a look at it. And I'd quit Flat Earth tomorrow. But there's another one, another test I can do on the ground that requires none of that. And that is the spacesuit test, the spacesuit challenge, which I have put out there, which is put me because the spacesuit, the astronaut suits that we see absolutely violate the laws of thermodynamics, which is pressure needs a container, plain and simple. It's like, well, another suit has a container. And it's like, no, no, no. The, the power of a vacuum on the outside of the suit should turn the inside pressure of that suit into a parade float. It should turn into a basketball. It should be instant. It should be violent. The suit would never be able to hold up. It should burst and the astronaut should die. And it is the finest example of, <laughs> of not even misdirection, just cre creative editing that I've ever seen. And that is when the early spacesuits were built, they were built with plastics and metals and they realized they look like B-movie robots. I mean, they were clunky and they did this because, well, the pressure of vacuum, you can't have a soft container. You can't have a, a soft, flexible thing. And then they, somebody came up with it. It was a brilliant, brilliant idea. And that is the average American doesn't know physics. They don't know any thermodynamics. So it's like, let's just shoot with a fabric suit. We'll just shoot it. Everyone will be running around, pretend like nothing's strange, and no one will have any, have any doubts about it. And every once in a while, someone will say, well, it's because of the layers. No, it's, it's special layers. I'm going, no, 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 no. My winter coat has layers. All it does is protect you from the cold. Layers would immediately pancake, and it would still turn into a basketball. Technically, a basketball like has three or four layers. No, a spacesuit would never, ever do it. They would have no articulation points. They would not be able to bend anything. Uh, if they moved, they'd be fighting the shape of that suit at all times. On top of that, uh, even if you could convince me that there is something in the backpacks of, of what we have now with microprocessor technology that, could, that somehow counteracts the vacuum of space, because I don't care about the oxygen or heating or cooling. I just care about the vacuum. Tell me how they did it with analog technology back in 1969. How, how, how did they do it? And nobody ever even complained. When, when, find me footage where someone's saying, oh, yeah, we only got 20 minutes of air left or anything to that regard. I, they just went out and did it. They wouldn't have been able to use their hands. Their hands might as well have been oven mitts. And they would have uh, never been able to manipulate complex electronics. I, I don't even want to get into the other problems with Apollo, from the satellite dish to the 10,000 foot, foot pounds of thrust that didn't create a splay pattern, the shadows that are intersecting, no feats of strength. Oh, it just goes on and on. It's maddening. Sorry, I ramble. It's what I do. No, that's fine. I, I've just this is kind of um, interesting. So, um, have you actually? Uh, visited any of the or have you how much have you studied about the apollo a lot <laughs> a lot okay. to, to the point where i know that the vh transmit vhf transmitter that they used with the battery technology they had if you were lucky on a good day maybe had a range of 50 miles and they punched through a quarter million miles and the van allen belts and they were sending data remember we didn't even have 1200 baud modems till 20 years later and they were shooting, t they were beaming back 10 frames per second of video and full audio. And it was doing two-way communication with pinpoint accuracy f from two moving targets. Oh, it, it, I'm about to have an aneurysm. It's just, it's, so, it's horrible. You, I didn't know this about you because, uh, but you don't believe that they actually landed on the moon is what you're trying to get at. No, no, it's way worse than that. I'm saying the entire NASA program is a sham from from beginning to end the only reason that nasa was created was to keep the truth of where we are under wraps so yeah apollo and they had to do it they absolutely had to militarize space and they had to fake it and th when they did it the production techniques aged terribly to where we were questioning it even the conspiracy guys were questioning it back in the the 70s and 80s at early you know way before the internet and then when the internet came out they were comparing i mean it's look at look at i mean I, I could show you a single image from apollo 12 in fact i think i sent one to the station uh uh about a month ago and i said uh, look take a look at this thing there's at least seven things wrong seven impossible things in this photo they were beautiful some of these shots were absolutely beautiful but they were absolutely wrong they could not happen in real life you they could only happen on a stage i mean intersecting shadows alone come on you have one light source <laughs> 
the sun. The shadows go in one direction. That's what happens outside when you're walking outside. The shadows always go in one direction. And we had, what, four or five different directions, which could have only come from a hot spot that was maybe 50 yards behind the target. This, again, nobody, the average person doesn't know any of this stuff. They didn't get it. Or the splay pattern, you know, the, the 10,000 foot pounds of thrust that supposedly blew into what appears to be volcanic ash covering the, the whole moon's surface. And yet it, when it hit and blew around, it, nobody got to rock. Nobody dug a hole. And it's like, oh, yeah, here's the rock. Did everyone, I mean, how deep was this ash? Nobody even talked about that. Uh, just... So when they placed a mirror down on the moon, which they use to kind of measure it and tell the distance that it is and, and see that the moon is kind of pulling away from us mm. very slowly each year. You don't believe that that happened? Nope. Nope. No. It's, it's ridiculous. The Apollo program makes no sense. Think of it this way. In fact, here, here's a, one of the questions I threw at a, a Georgetown physicist, which was one of the five questions. That we'll, we'll, the, we won't get into the, the first four right away, but uh, the, the fifth one I threw at him was the Van Allen radiation trap question which is, are the Van Allen belts deadly? Yes or no? And it's a trap, because if you say, yes, they are deadly, then how did the Apollo program make multiple round trips, I think six, at least six round trips manned through the Van Allen belts? Uh, nobody died, nobody got radiation poisoning, nobody got cancer, there's still like five of these guys walking around today how, with aluminum and plastic as shielding, because the only three things that can beat radiation are lead, gold, and a whole bunch of water. And if you say, well, that's not the only, okay, go ahead. Well, what, what, what else are you going to put on top of a spaceship? Let me know, because last time I checked. Yeah, but they didn't spend a, I mean, it's not like they were hanging out there. To, the to best Van speed, if, if the Van Allen belts are at least 60,000 miles thick, and our best speed, if you believe what they claim, is 17, 18,000 miles an hour, that's three hours in the belts each way. And, is, and, and I know that Van Allen said, because he had to recant, because he announced it in 59, and then Kennedy says a couple of years later, oh, yeah, we're going to go to the moon. And they immediately went back to Van Allen. It's like, oh, how are you going to do it? He's going, we're going to go really, really fast. That's fine. If you wanna, if, I'll, I'll give you that. If you say you only spent two, maybe three hours in the belts on the way out, on the way back, you're hitting the brakes. Because you got to slow for the whole reentry thing, you're lingering around there before you come back. So well, still, if you if you go to Chernobyl, for example, like a lot of these Instagram models are now, yeah. you stay there for a couple hours, take pictures, you leave. A couple of days later, you come back, stay there for three more hours, leave. I mean, you're not going to die of radiation poisoning. Don't don't take that up with me. Take it up with Van Allen. He was the guy in '59 that said. Well, I'm taking it up with you because I'm talking to you. No, I no, can't no, talk. No, He's no, dead. No, Van Allen was your one of your icons. Van Allen from NASA said Well, that, I mean, now we're now we're saying that he's my icon. Well, okay, I don't, if he I'm, isn't, who I'm is? I'm with you. The what? Except for the whole flat Earth thing. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. Well, I'm just saying that when Van Allen comes out in '59 and he says that it's super, super deadly, no one can ever, ever go through it. And then he has to recant a couple of years later. It's like, well, uh, we're just going to go through it really fast. And then he didn't explain how they got through it really slow on the way back. That's one thing. But it's, okay, fine. But isn't that part of science is that when the evidence is there, you change with that. Perfect. Like perfect. Which earlier. is what leads me into the other part of the question. You say, fine, they're not deadly. Okay, they're not deadly. I didn't say they weren't deadly. I'm saying they didn't spend so much time there to uh, turn into ghouls yeah, from far out. No, 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 no. Let's, let's go down this road. Because if you're saying they're not deadly-ish, then you go I to the... I didn't say they weren't deadly-ish. The, the, you're saying they're not a big deal. Van Allen, you know, was wrong. We're, we're, gonna, we're not going to play semantics here. So, so was Van Allen right or wrong? Because, again, here's where I'm going with this. If... If you go to the NASA website, even right now, you go to nasa.gov, and you look up, there's a video on there. It's still there. Why they haven't pulled it, I don't know. It's called Orion Trial by Fire, where they're talking about their manned Mars program. And they go into great detail with graphics and a narrator, and they say, we cannot put man, we're not even going to test man capsules, because we haven't figured out the radiation problem of the Van Allen belts. And, and this was made at the end of 2014. And, and I remember bringing this up to uh, um, Friedman before he died. And, and he just, just dropped him. He just, he just didn't know what to do. He goes, that's thing up, still up there? I go, yes, it's still up there. And it's like, no, no, no. You, you, you solved the radiation problem. You solved it 50 years earlier. You solved it in the 60s. In fact, you solved it so well that nobody even died of cancer from, from radiation. So which is it? Is it deadly or is it not deadly? And the, the Georgetown physicist, he folded like a card table. Of course, the other four questions helped. 
but that was that was the big one at the end and that was it he was like and the german television team that set the whole thing up they apologize it's sorry it's not going to happen so what can i tell you so let's get back to the flat earth for a second sure um, I want to talk about the uh, ice ring or the ice wall. Sure. Uh, which which is it again to you? Uh, I've really I, described I, different I, ways for different interviews. Or different I call it. YouTube I call videos. it actually neither. Everybody else brings up ice wall. I just say it's just the coastline event. It's Antarctica, is what it is. Antarctica mm -hmm. starts where you know at the edge of you know the the whatever ocean, and then it continues outward for several thousand miles until you eventually run into a barrier. Okay. So, so, um, but I've heard you also say that uh, the U.S. government, well, I mean, not U.S. government, but you're not allowed to fly over Antarctica. Yeah, pretty much. You, uh, you are not, a, only military and military scientists are allowed down there with the exception of the occasional They're tour. not always military scientists, but go ahead. The what? Go ahead. Well, no, I mean, ex with the exceptional tour group, yeah, you can spend 15,000 American and go down there, and they'll escort you out to what they call the South Pole, and you can have your picture taken with penguins. But other than that, explain to me why no corporation in the history of the world is allowed to set up shop there. And they're not even allowed to talk about it, ever. And the treaty is unbroken. It's the only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties, and it's not even up for review until the year 2041. Even though we live in a world of greed and money and power, and Admiral Byrd in the United States Navy came back in the 1950s and said the place is made out of resources. There's nothing stopping you. There's no indigenous la uh, uh, animal life, no plant life, no old populations, no ruins. It's just ice and snow, and no corporation can go down there, no matter how much. In fact, they're not even allowed to lobby about it. That's the part that threw me the biggest. Which was like, why, why isn't British Petroleum running full-page ads every month saying, why, well, it'd be great for us to go. Why isn't Shell Oil? Why isn't everybody down there carving this thing up like Admiral Byrd said during his television interview in 1954? In fact, he was worried that there would be some sort of military conflict down there. And then five years later, they put this treaty together and said, yeah, nobody should ever go down there ever. Good night, everybody. Roll credits. And that was it. It's bulletproof. Why? Wasn't that the same treaty that they were working on for Mars and the moon and different stuff like that, that we can't just divide this up amongst countries, what? although certain sectors can be controlled by certain countries Money. for scientific uh, use? Go ahead. The, the United States lives on – look, we're, we're not the good guys. If we want to start fracking in your backyard tomorrow, we can make that happen, and we do. We bribe and threaten and do all sorts of fun things to people all day long, and that's just fracking to get a little bit of gas. If, if Admiral Byrd comes out there and says that there's an entire mountain range made out of coal that could fuel the entire world, there's oil, there's gas, there's minerals, and there's uranium, and he's really worried that people are going to start scraping over this thing, why, why would We'd you... We'd say they have weapons of mass destruction, right? High five. What? What about the weapons okay. of mass destruction? No, that was a joke. Oh, I get it. I get it. No, no, no. I, believe me, you and I probably say, share some of the same things on different conspiracies. No question. And, and it was one of the, the first clues that I did, uh, and, and I'm not trying to pick here, and I'm not, I'm not, I don't know, know you very well, which is I, I've had friends you literally, well, okay, at all, I've had friends that tell me, uh, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, the entire royal family is made out of lizard people. And yet right. I come back at them, I go, oh, that's really interesting. I go, what about flatter thing? Go, get the hell out of here. It's like, really? Because you just said the, the whole lizard thing, and yet I'm the, the crazy one? Come on. I mean, I, well, I have an opinion on every conspiracy you could ever think of. Uh, and I hated this one until one day I didn't. So So maybe you won't hate the uh, draconian type, uh, you know, lizard people that are the royal family. I don't, I don't hate George it. I don't, I, don't, I don't hate it. I mean, there's some I like better than others. Do I think that, that Elvis had Bigfoot's baby? No. But, I'm, but I, if anyone brings up something to me that I either haven't heard of or they say, well, hey, let's revisit this, I can't shoot it down because I start my day with the weirdest thing apparently ever, the thing that triggers See, a whole I, bunch of people. I feel like you're taking shots at David Icke. It makes me feel, like, really nervous. I'm a, no, David no, no, Icke no, is no, a I personal don't, friend of mine, a very personal uh, friend. No, no, I've got, I've got nothing against David Icke. The only person uh, – no, not at all. And, and I know he's addressed it. The only the – only, uh, conspiracy topic that really didn't dovetail in uh, was was Richard Hoagland. 
out, out of all of them. And uh, because of the whole, you know, he said there's a secret space program. Not just is there a normal space program, but we have like five million people living on the moon and hundreds of thousands of people already living on Mars. And when he was supposed to show up at a debate in some station and uh, he bailed, he, it was no show and we had to go off with somebody else and, and he's never spoken to us since. No, everybody else, I, I, have, no, I have no beef with him. Well, back to the ice wall thing. Yeah. You know, uh, you can actually, if you'll find someone who's willing to do it, fly you over Antarctica. The problem is the fuel and the money. And the second problem is that the reason why, like, Delta and other people won't do that is because of the Tower Act, which you have to have airports within a certain point of each other. Mm. That way it would reduce crashes. I mean, a lot of this, too, if you look at Alaska, yeah. I mean, there's certain areas of Alaska to where there's a lot of plane crashes because there's nothing but snow and ice and tundra, and people tend to get lost. And yet, Even with our scientific equipment and, and yet, made by NASA. What? 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 All right. Never a straight answer. It, oh, absolutely. Or, you know, if you want to go back a few years and need another seven astronauts. Okay. Well, we don't need to. This this isn't a shock jock show like the record need to know about. We're <laughs> this is more of a family show. Oh, okay. Okay. So they do the shock jock stuff there. I don't. I don't like that sort of stuff. All right. All right. So go ahead. What are you? Oh gonna well, say? no. What I was going to say was, look, when it comes to Antarctica, uh, we we've seen just about everything when it comes to yeah, the, the planes don't fly over it. Uh, as far as even because people have said, well, you know, what if we could find you a pilot with a fully fueled 757, you know, a, a tanker, you know, it's like, OK, well, a couple things. If you want to do that, if you found a pilot crazy enough to do it, uh, he would have to ignore GPS for the most part, because GPS is a military system and it is going to steer you in a certain direction. He'd have to ignore compasses and there's not a lot of landmarks and he'd have to run the risk when he got out there. If the military told him not to fly in a certain point, he would have to ignore it. Would he risk all these things? Why? What's in it for him? It's, uh, you know, the, the treaty screams go away. It, everything about that place screams oh, go away. I mean, the Antarctic, the most the, most people don't know that as far as continents go, most of the Antarctic... Well, like vaccines, isn't that more of a public safety thing? saying look you're going to get lost so uh there's no there's no way to refuel from here to there in in so, some cases I mean, that should the distance actually should be shorter to go across the antarctic than to go across one of the big oceans not necessarily the indian ocean but the south atlantic or definitely the south pacific it should be shorter in some cases i mean we fly over the north pole all the time i mean i don't know if it's the magnetic north pole but we fly over it all the time south pole in fact i've read a wikipedia thing where they said well it's because it's too cold it's like what are you talking about when you get up at certain altitudes it's always negative 30 or whatever it is it's always really really cold and by the way your alaska comment uh, reminds me of the uh, the woman who was flying from i think the philippines to los angeles and her water broke. It was on, a, on one of the big jets. And instead of continuing, which would have been closer to Hawaii, they diverted north to Anchorage, of all places, with, I think, not as probably not as great hospitals. I'm sure Hawaii has some fantastic hospitals, considering the senior citizens that go out there. And they went to Anchorage instead. And you say, okay, what's the point? My point is, on a flat Earth, that route makes sense. But on a globe Earth, it does not. So why they... Well, but there's a lot of things. Like, for example, if you have a flat, let's say we have the flat Earth. Right. Like they let's let's do the uh, whole the one like they have at the UN, right? That little map thing that they have there. Yeah. Uh, the UN also in on this, am I right? No, not at all. Don't have to be. Oh, no high five on that one. Sorry. Well, no, I mean why? Why you don't have less is more. This isn't like the Manhattan Project where you had a whole bunch of people making the atomic bomb and then you know they all sworn to secrecy where everything was compartmentalized. With with this need to know. I mean, I don't think even the astronauts, the current astronauts. Everybody since, uh, I think everybody after Apollo was just, they would sign the non-disclosures and said, look, it's above your pay grade to know why you're doing this. You're just going to do it. No different than... Part of, the, part of the secrecy for the Manhattan Project, though, is the fact that Jonathan Hickman did not want a lot of that out there. So well, we all know that. Well, I, I'm just saying that uh, it's kind of like, as far as compartmentalization goes, it's kind of like uh, when you send a spy out to assassinate somebody. You don't give him the whole backstory and exactly the political intrigue of why you're, he's assassinating somebody. You just tell him, look, pull the trigger, knock this guy out on June 29th at midnight. 
that's it. Uh, yeah. So we're going by the. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going by the uh, map that we have here. If you actually plan stuff out, yeah. wouldn't it be longer to fly on a flat Earth from Australia to, let's say, Hawaii? Yes. Yeah. Or, my, or, my 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 point actually. The but fact they do paths every day that that show that it, it doesn't work like that. Will I mean we we can time the airplanes from when they leave to when they land, yeah. and it's. Okay, well, go ahead. And, and no, and I and I come no, I have, that's one of the clues I talked about, which was people say, well, the the times don't match up. I go, it doesn't really matter because the routes don't match up either. Meaning, when these planes get out over the oceans, this is a very big point. They get up, I think, 150 miles, maybe 200 tops out of ground radar range. They go dark. They go lost. Their latitude and longitude, which were being accurately tracked, go into approximated or estimated mode. Which basically mean we have no idea where that freaking plane is. Or well, we approximately know where that plane is. But we don't really know where that plane is. And it never, ever comes back until they get within about 150, 200 miles of whatever big landmass they're, they're coming up upon. And you say, okay, what's the point? My point is, is that... We track them from... Oh, go ahead. Well, Sorry. I mean, if I you, no, no, if you have the GPS... You, you have GP... We do track them from... Go ahead. You track them from space, right, with the GPS system? No, you can track them from airport to airport. Fine, show me the routes. Can't you? No. Well, airport, I mean, airport, to airport, what? Like but my point Dallas, is, is that it's Dallas to St. It's Louis. It's still longer. It's still longer. I mean, how do you how do you uh, adjust for that time? It's, These I are don't. From maps that I don't. It doesn't really have. matter to me because you can't prove the route. See, it's kind of a push. No, but it does because it does matter because that's part of it. I mean, if, that's the thing is that you're always so big on evidence, 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 yeah. but whenever someone puts something like that up, you're like, well, it doesn't matter because of this. Yeah. Well, just can't you explain that part to me? Because I'm trying to learn. I'm a truth seeker. No, no, I, I can't explain. I'm just having I, a hard time following this. I don't, I don't know because I can't prove the route. That's where it all started, which was if I can't prove the flight path, which should be there, the latitude and longitude coordinates should be there for the entire flight. 30 well, you're just going in a straight line. Right. Yes. From well, well roughly, point depending on point. where so it is. So you should be able on a flat Earth to measure out the time. Again, what does the time mean anything to me if I can't get the latitude and longitude of the flight itself? Meaning, once the flight drops off the radar, I have no idea how they got there. Now you're right. There is a distance issue. You're absolutely right. There's a perspective so issue. Do you think they go into warp speed? I, I mean, have. I have no idea. Whatever. There's something going on with the map that we still. We've only been doing this four years. But what I'm saying is there's a... So Flat Earth proponents have been around for a lot longer than All right, that. fine. Flat Earth, Flat Earth 2.0. How's that? I, uh, I still don't. Wait, wait, I don't what do you want to call I know, it? I know you're a computer programmer guy. I don't... No, I don't no, no, no. I mean, the, the old, it's the old like guard that. versus the new guard. We, in fact, the, the Flat Earth, the official Flat Earth Society has nothing to do with us. They waited right. so long. They finally called me. I said, where have you guys been? We've been running just across the countryside. And no, you guys, you guys haven't made a peep. And so we've just been doing it through social media. So, but we've only been doing that for about four years. I mean, since the whole YouTube thing happened. But yes, it's been around for a long time, of course. And I, I'm the first one to say it. I didn't invent Flat Earth. I didn't even invent the new version of Flat Earth. No, but what, what about the distances? If the Flat Earth is the way that you guys say it is, right. then how do we make up for those distances? Don't know. And how do we make up for the time not matching up? Don't know. I mean, you have to have a theory... I don't. There's so well. My theory is there's something wrong. There's something else going on with the map that we don't know, which is why we get in such heated arguments with ourselves about the map. There's something. There's something in the perspective where we don't. We're not seeing yet. We we don't know. Some people have suggested a jet, You know, if the jet stream is circular, that they're catching some a, a super jet stream from somewhere. Uh, you know, other people have said. You know, of course. You know, going to warp speed through some sort of teleportation. I don't necessarily buy into either of those but i know there's something going on absolutely no no question which is what and the, i got into it because the flight routes didn't make any damn sense which was there was all these flights in the southern hemisphere and i had a, a corporate travel agent from the southern hemisphere who said uh because you, you have no idea how hard it is to book flights down here because there are capital cities capital cities between south america and africa and uh, australia and the and the islands which you cannot get direct flights for, no matter how much money you have. And there's, you know, rich people down there say, I want a first class flight from this city to this city. You cannot get them. You have to take double connections or single connections. And they always go wildly north to places. And, and the pilots have all told me the same thing. It's like they're not going up there to pick passengers up because it's all about the fuel. All the airlines ever, ever care about is fuel. 
which is why we got into it. And on a flat map, all these double and triple connections make more sense. They turn from these weird angle triangle things to these shallow dog legs or almost a straight line. But, I mean, how do we know they're not picking up passengers? Because that's always the excuse. We've all been on planes before to where you have to take two or three, but we also know there's more direct flights if you pay for more. Yeah, but you don't... I mean, if you fly from here to England, you're still not going to... I mean, you can fly oh, from yeah, yeah, yeah. But if Charlottesville to London... I mean, but if you're flying from on a flat Earth, go ahead. but if you're flying from South Africa, you're not going all, all the way up into the north, going like through San Francisco to get to freaking Australia, or was it Buenos Aires to Australia? There was and a, also there's they were, yeah. the, the you don't pick up that many people. They said it's all it, it doesn't work like that, and you're doubling. Well, if, the, you're, if you're going to bring up Africa, I mean, there are some countries that you can't fly over because. There's no agreements there. There's a chance you could get shot down. Yeah, sure. Um, sure. There's there's reasons for diverting certain flights to certain places. Mm. Others, some some airlines don't have. Uh, for example, if you were to fly to Arkansas, right. Delta doesn't. If you were to fly to Hot Springs, there's no Delta. Uh, you know, we have a little airport here, but there, there's no Delta stall there. Delta has no contract right. here, so you can't fly down here. Right. You have to fly into Memphis, into Little Rock. So and then you drive down sure. here. But the, the, so the cor- that's with the other airlines too. I got you. No, no, that's that's not bad logic. Not at all. Uh, the corporate travel agent I was talking to though said that when she, you know, she'd call up people and say, "Look, they no one could give her an answer." And that would be an easy answer to give. It's like, "Sorry, you can't fly over this airspace. Sorry, you can't go to this capital city." It's like, uh that's she said it's it's widespread. I mean, out of all the flights in the southern hemisphere from from southern to southern, there is just a tiny handful of nonstops, tiny compared to the in, compared to the north. And she, she she was saying that she goes the north. She goes, you have no idea how lucky you are. In fact, you can get nonstops just about anywhere. This is a question of how much money and what time of the day you want to leave. In the southern right. hemisphere, if you have a private jet, you can make those type of things out. But what? if you're flying for Delta or anybody else, the whole thing there is money. You have to make these plans out. You have contracts. Also, you have to pick up enough people, drop off enough people. I mean, there's a reason why things get over book go ahead sure no no I, I got you i got you but in the in the southern in the southern hemisphere it's a nightmare you can't statistically it should be a lot higher than that you can't tell me that 95 percent of the the south to south flights are double connections that go through the north and that you you know you just have i mean seriously i was looking for days and i am i got like the same five flights handed to me always it was like oh yeah there's this flight and this flight and i'm going and that's when i had to look at the routes the two clues were based off of this. You know, the first one... Was this from... Where was this from? Is this from uh, the website of the the plane people, or was this from Travelocity, or, or where were you trying this from? Oh, no. It, well, yeah, it was... I Any any online booking site, they're all pretty much integrated. I think there's only, like, four, and they're all merged. But, yeah, that... and Well, they have deals with the airlines, so they would just be going by what they went with. Yes. So they, they can't actually... Let's go back to the... Uh, uh, vacuum and space stuff that I wanted sure. to get to, back to earlier. Sure. Um, before we do that, yeah. uh, let's talk about uh, gravity. I know that uh, your frenemy David Weiss doesn't believe in gravity. Why? He believes in something called I'm pool. still stunned by this. Why? Are, just, are you trying it, to start a fight too. between us? I'm not trying to start a fight between no, you guys. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm going to stop this right now. And, and I, until you answer this, if you don't answer this the right way, I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> Which is... What? Okay, well, can you, can you answer my thing first, and I'll come right back to this, because we only got, like, eight or ten minutes left. All right, left. go. And I, I just want to, to get this. Go. So, uh, do you believe in gravity or not? Yes, of course I do. Most of the flat earthers okay. do believe in gravity. I also do believe in density, though. I mean, you take a helium balloon, you let it go, it's going to rise up. We are living in a thin version of water. Four parts nitrogen to one part oxygen. Different than H2O, two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. And that okay, is... Okay, before we get... Before we get to the David Weiss thing, so I don't want to run out of time. Yeah. So we do both agree that gravity is real. Yes, gravity is correct? real. Yes. Okay, so if we go on a flat Earth model, right. um, wouldn't since gravity always pulls to the center, right? Wouldn't that be the same way with Earth? What? The further you go out, the more gravity would be pulling you back to the center. The more buildings would be bent more toward the center 
because gravity is pulling in. No, that's... But yet that's, we don't have that. No, that's the whole Vsauce argument, which is... No, no, no. I mean, in this case, we're talking about... Okay, first off, we're talking about a flat disk that's not in space. It's probably just sitting somewhere. Who knows? In a lab on God's desk. I don't know where it is. On a turtle, right? Terry no, Pratchett fan? No, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a turtle. No, because that turtle is also in space, if you believe if you believe it. No, I'm saying that there doesn't have to be space at all. So if there's just a flat disk, gravity is just pulling down. That, that I believe the, the difference between what uh, scientists say is gravity in a globe and what I say that gravity is in a flat Earth is very, very similar. And that is they say gravity is pulling things straight down to the center of a sphere. And I'm saying it's a disk and things are just pulling straight down. And, well, just the center, period, is how gravity works. So uh, still, yeah, wouldn't yeah, that yeah, be the same thing? You're being pulled. Don't get into that. Neil deGrasse. Tyson, uh, one of your scientist gods, says that flatter. That hey, I'm not a friend. I'm not a fan of Neil deGrasse Tyson. Fine, okay? fine. Hashtag me too. Well, find find me a. Well, yeah, there's that. But I mean, find me a, a, more, a more high. Pro Michio Kaku. Go with Michio Kaku. Okay, fine. Michio Kaku. Thing. He would say the same thing, and that is that they can't say what gravity is. They can only say right. what it. They can only say what it does. They can only say the symptoms Correct. of it. They say it's this magical molecular force that pulls things down to the center of a ball. And I say it's a magical molecular force that just pulls things straight down. Just because you go out on the edge and technically there's uh, more right. density, if you're looking lengthwise, I suppose if you got to the edge and and then then maybe. But in this case, I think the gravity is artificial. I think that if this whole place is a structure, a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling, that gravity is whatever the builders say it is. Oh, yeah, and by the way, gravity isn't nearly strong enough to, to hold the atmosphere on versus the vacuum of space. No way, no how, ever in a million years. I'll give you a quick example. If you had the second floor of your building, if you turned it into a vacuum chamber and you had a cork in your ceiling and you pulled it out or opened it or whatever, you know full well what would happen. And that is the air would equalize extremely fast, extremely violently, and you would either black out or die or both. And my question, well, would, be, my question would be, why didn't the gravity in your office keep the air there? Why not? Well, we do know that 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 like there is a what you're talking about is uh, like the atmosphere on here, and it's still encased on Earth. But other places where we don't have the you know magnet magnetosphere, oh, excuse me, yeah. like uh, say Mars, a lot of their atmosphere was swept away. Definitely, Mercury's was swept away, and oh, right, the planets, uh, Venus. right, right, what the the planets that that you think exist, those, right, they do exist, right, they're not just lights in the sky. No. Well, there you go. There's the big difference. And you Not can, just lights in the sky. They're just lights in the sky. That's all they are. And the only reason we have air in here is it's a compressed system. It's a pressurized, enclosed system. Vacuum of space would rip the atmosphere off this place so quickly, it would never get started. Life would never, ever happen here. It's a pre You're living in a greenhouse. Hence the term greenhouse gases. It's literally a greenhouse. Hence the term greenhouse effect, which is what we call Mars, or I'm sorry, Venus, yeah. our little brother, right? The the red light, yeah, sure. Well, no, Venus. The, the Mar Mars is red, band. Venus would be white, uh, Saturn... I, no, I Venus even... the band. <laughs> Got it. No, I mean, seriously, the, if, if we are in a building, there doesn't have to be space. There doesn't have to be space. Everyone's, we've been conditioned for so many years, so young an age, that we just believe in space because we're told space. It doesn't have to be. All you have to do is create the illusion of space. Planetarium. Why, when you go, people say, oh, I've seen the moons of Jupiter. Fine. Take a pair of binoculars. Go to a planetarium. Look at Jupiter. And they say, that's not fair. I, I go, does it look more or less real? And they say, well, you're in a building. It doesn't count. I go, actually, it's my point. When you walk out of that building, why aren't you in just a much bigger one? Sorry, I keep coughing. That's right. um, I have kind of a sore throat. Right. The um, Back to the, this sort of thing, if you are given a lot of evidence out there that, because this is what it kind of seems like, yeah. much like the fan vaxxers and other people, when you're given a ton of evidence, because the thing about skeptics right. is you're supposed to be skeptical. But the idea behind it is that once you're given enough evidence, then you're like, okay, well, I can no longer be skeptical of that because... Now we have enough proof. If you, if somebody puts I me, mean, we, if somebody puts me in an astronaut suit and throws me in a vacuum chamber and to, I'll sign the waiver and tell me how I don't die, then I will quit flat Earth tomorrow if I survive. Everything's fine, and I have things that you can test to see if it's a pure vacuum. It costs about four dollars from a hardware store, and no one. I put this challenge out for the last two and a half years. 
Science could shut me down in two seconds. All they have to do is give me a va an astronaut suit. And, of course, you might want to explain the technology in that magic backpack that tells me how I don't die. No one, no scientist, no science advocate has ever explained it to me. What, what physical, what thing defies thermodynamics in that backpack? I, I want to get back to the whole, because uh, we're running out of time, but I want to get back to the whole you don't believe in outer space right. or the planets right. or anything like that. Right. So what is uh, above us then? Outs. Is it like what some people believe, which is there's uh, these huge lights that are above us, yeah. like huge light bulbs that are shining down light upon us? Yep. You're, you're in a giant advanced Truman show. That's all, that's all you're in. It's all you've ever been in. We believe the world that is presented to us. And we've been living in... You get a red pill? The what? It's a Matrix reference. Well, I mean, if you want to go the digital world, sure. And I've said this said this in the book and i said look i hate to i hate to break it to flat earthers but uh and is if it is flat and if it is enclosed it's probably digital which is a whole nother thing which i don't usually like to get into because it's really a mind bender even though the matrix is 20 years old this year so what why the what do you what don't you want to get into are you talking about the grand well no 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 uh, I, what i mean is if if it is digital, if it's some sort of virtual reality which is very very possible if it's simulated, I mean, the, the double slit experiment just screams it. Not, not, not only that, but the uh, neuroscience and free will experiment. I mean, the double slit experiment pretty much proved it about 10, 15 years ago, that it's, some, that it's got some sort of virtual properties to it. But I don't like bringing it up to people because the average person... Okay, now, go, go into a little bit more of that because I'm interested in that. Okay, the double slit experiment was something that did with... No, 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 I mean about the virtual uh, the... reality things. I think you mean like a like a... Simulation like, a, like a simulation, yeah, no, no different than The Matrix or the movie The Thirteenth Floor. Uh, it's like a grandfather simulation. Grandfather simulation. Is that the idea that we're a computer program within a computer program? Within oh yeah, 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 yeah. The, well, yeah, Thirteenth is... Floor was based on a, a 1975 German film called World on a Wire, which was based on a 1970. Well, let's just stick to this yeah. right now because we're running out of time, and I, I want to go more into this because sure. this is kind of fascinating. Yeah. I like getting a little Grant Morrison y on this. Okay. So, um, go ahead. That's what you believe? I, I do. I do. And that is, it, look, I love Flat Earth. I really do. But I think it's just the beginning of it. Flat Earth, the reason why it's resonating, the reason why I'm doing it is it's easy to understand. Trying to tell a person even now about virtual reality is still tough. I thought it would have been easier in 2019 or 2015. Well, it's, but it's, you mean simulation. A simulation. Virtual simulation. There's two different matrix. things. So we're going to do semantic stuff. What? between so let's 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 go by it this way okay right. um in order to have a simulation uh let's say grandfather simulation you have have you ever you you've done this before because you're a computer guy right yeah. you're a computer programmer yep, yep, yep. you uh know what it's like when you plug up like four or five computers to each other okay there's little drag going down from each one sure each one has a little bit slower process right so if we were to stop and take a look far out into the galaxy, wouldn't we need a loading screen uh, instead of being able to look at planets from like a um, microscope? Or not microscope. Um, what are it depends. Did you what, look through? What if what if the viewer? Telescope? What if what if the display system, which would be I, I don't even know the resolution, not 8K because uh, we have those now, like Mandelbrot resolution. What if the resolution could adjust? depending on the viewer what if the viewer was instant so it didn't have to crank up the resolution until the civilization developed a technology that could do it and only then did it but if we're sim but there's no drag throughout our existence there's no quote-unquote sandwiches in the matrix for the I beg, right? I beg to differ with the between the double slit seriously can you give me a proof or an example of that? okay okay um well the double slit experiment basically says that no we, it went just another proof of that okay a different proof? How about uh, the yes. uh, seriously neuroscience and free will, which I almost guarantee you haven't looked into. Which is okay. That's not. Let's let's go because we're programmed, right? So let's say we're we're a. Uh, oops, my headphones almost went out. Let's say that we're in this simulation, right? Right. Uh, so we have several. We wouldn't be the only one. There would be generation after generation after generation uh, testing out how timelines would work. Potentially. So this keeps going. In order to do this, you have to have uh, an enormous amount of power to do these types of simulations. Yeah. So you would 
have to have maybe, let's say, a supercomputer the size of the moon. How are we going to come up with that type of power to do that sort of simulations that we have today? Who are or that we, mean, we will us? all be in for this world? I'm, no, no, no. Well, I'm saying that we had nothing to do with the building of the reality we're, we're seeing in right now. That it was, it was whoever was here before us, whatever civilization, and there have been a bunch before us. Anunnaki. Well, you take a pick. I mean, take what, whatever civilizations were in the sunken cities of Japan or India or the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids or Bimini Road. Take a pick. There's a lot of them to choose from. I'm just saying that we, whoever built this was much, I use the line from Contact, which I love so much because it was humble. When she goes, did you build this? You know, when, when she finally got there. And he goes, we didn't build it. We don't know who did. <laughs> well, you know, we're just. So you're saying there's no proof. Of a virtual, I mean, of, virtu of, virtu of a, of a, again, of a Mark, simulation. this is really, hold on, hold on. This is really great. I would like to have you on more to talk about this. Yeah. Because we ran out of time. Okay. Uh, can I get with them and have us get details on it? Sure. Because uh, the next show is about to start, uh, Bad News Radio. Oh, okay, sure, sure, sure. So let's see if they want to ask you any questions real quick. <laughs> We're going to roll into um, a third show. Because we'll do kind of like a, uh, you're being passed around right oh, now. Oh, God. All right, so all right. If, if that's uh, yeah, cool yeah, I, you, I can go for uh, a little while longer, but I eventually I, I, I've got to get started. All right, just hold on ahead. one second while we, while we set this up, okay? All right, KUHSLP Radiopedia. We'll be back in a minute. Bad News Radio is coming up right next with Ryan, so just hold on. All right, you're listening to Bad News Radio with Ryan. We're just getting started here now. Uh, Mark, are you still there? I am still here. Oh, Mark. Yeah. Okay. So they said they wanted to kind of carry on this uh, conversation. <laughs> uh, I, I I don't know I don't know uh, much about you. I, I've been kind of looking up some of your uh stuff here i'm uh so, i'm mostly into flat earth but i'm completely insane obviously and, <laughs> and uh and now i'm on my third this has got to be a first for me the uh, thir third show in a row on the same station yeah uh i thought it's pretty interesting that um, they carried on with you for that long, so I, I figured. I think, I think they wanted to get some, maybe. I think they wanted to get some drama in the last one. So what do you what do you want to talk about? Uh, well, okay. So besides uh, the, your theory on flat Earth, yeah. is there anything? Is there any other um, conspiracies? Kind of um, big conspiracy theory that you really like you you really uh believe and champion um well there's there's some but i don't think there's there's some i can't probably bring up on this on this network i don't want to upset people um i mean th okay. there's obviously some some big ones out there but i mean if uh, let's put it this way i started in the conspiracy world and i've got an opinion on just about every conspiracy okay. you can think of seriously and right right just, right i mean let's do some of the big ones uh besides apollo because that's linked to flat earth anyway uh, right. Pearl Harbor, JFK, 9-11, every American right. war. Uh, I probably shouldn't, and probably, you know, unless you really, really want to get into vaccinations, I, I have an opinion about that. I even have an exclusive uh, conspiracy that nobody ever thought of. That's that's how... What is that? Uh, the Panama Canal. There's What about there's, it? There's, or, or the Titanic. The Titanic's a good one, but that's just insurance fraud. We can get into that later. Right. Uh, the Panama Canal <laughs> was, was, was something I, I looked at, which was... Okay, think about it this way. Uh, I'll do it really quick for you. So the Hoover Dam, you know, big engineering project, right? Lots of cement. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. So how many people died during the, the building of the Hoover Dam? Probably, I think, uh, so, something along the line of, of like 70, which, you know, right. acceptable back in those days. People fall into the cement. There was a great height. You know, was, you know the, the technology wasn't great. Our safety standards were abysmal com by comparison. And we, we lost about exactly. 70 guys. Do you have any okay. and, and by comparison, the Panama Canal, which was really just a big ditch, right? It was just this big, giant, you know, dit canal that they, they carved and, and linked up a, a lake to an ocean, which was also tied to an ocean. Um, do you know how many people died in the, the making of that thing? How many? The better part of 6,000. A lot. All civilians. Why? Why is that? Well, that's just it. And then, and you say, wow, that's a lot, right? And then here's your reaction. I will guarantee you'd be like, oh, okay. And I'll say, well, they died from malaria and yellow fever. All right. And then most people, right. they go, well, of course, that's expected. It's Central America. People die from malaria and yellow fever. And it's like there's no conspiracy there. I go, well, yeah, it is because we didn't. The Americans, you know, we were the ones that finished the panic Now, we didn't start it. 
In fact, it was the French. Mm -hmm. The French had the idea first. They were there just before we were. And they lost so many guys. They lost over 20,000 men trying to finish this. Yeah, yeah. I'm, re I'm, reading, I'm reading that they lost uh, over, over 20,000, about 22,000 yeah, men yeah. from diseases yeah, and they accidents. Lost a ton. And the savings of 800,000 different investors because of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The French people started rioting because you can imagine there were a lot. I mean, we're talking about civilians here. This is not, they're sending, not sending out troops. I mean, I'm sure the Army Corps of Engineers was, was, had a presence there, but it was mostly civilians. So, okay, where's, right. where's the conspiracy? The conspiracy is this, and this is corporations, which is uh, the Americans knew this. They knew how many the French had lost. The, hell, the, the French equipment was still down there when they got there, and they were fully okay. expected. You know, it's like, okay, what can we do? And even with the advances we had with bug repellent and mosquito netting, which I think we pretty much had to invent for this, they were fully expected to lose uh, 10,000 men. And they sent them anyway. And I guarantee you, during the recruiting, when they were recruiting engineers from all parts of the United States, they didn't tell mm -hmm. them, oh, yeah, you got about a one in eight chance of dying when you go down there. Right. But, so it's like there's there's your conspiracy, which is they didn't tell them. It's like, look, that's a lot of guys. <laughs> it's a huge amount of people. And you're walking them into that meat grinder, which isn't a war. I mean, we've had smaller conf armed conflicts that didn't lose that many guys. But they sent them anyway because the ends justified the means. Which was, look, okay. we, we wanted to build, and it, I got to tell you, I hate to do this, to say this to anyone who may be listening, which is, look, you can put a price on human life. You absolutely can. We do it in the military all the time, and we do it in civilian life all the time. I'm, so I can agree with that. So they, uh, that's, that's what everything runs on, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what look, the whole United States runs on, right? Yes. We, yeah, we, look, it's, it's in every military tactic we've ever done, which is there, there, is pawn, there are pawns in the game, and then there are bait. Uh, look at some, right. look at something simple like um, uh, the Mexican American War, where okay. it, the history doesn't tell the whole story. It's like Texas wanted to be its own country; they couldn't beat Mexico by themselves. The United States cut them a deal. It's like, look, you can be your own state, have a whole ton of territory, uh, but we got to start this war. And it's like, okay, you sacrifice the Alamo, two hundred guys, sacrifice them. You know, remember the Alamo, and then what? Yeah, what yeah, what yeah. was the exchange rate on that? Two hundred guys. What did we get? We got Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, because there used to be an old Mexico, apparently, and uh, that worthless piece of real estate called California. Trillions in real estate, and we got it for 200 guys. There is it's a, all worthless real estate to me. Well, <laughs> the point is, is that it's huge tracts of land that was traded for, for men. And uh, we, it's, it's one of the, the unfortunate truths. I want, I'm going to say inconvenient truths, but... Uh, one of the unfortunate truths of what we are we you know in in conflicts there you know the the pawns don't get to know what's happening and so and so when 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 did you um start uh kind of getting the flat earth thing in your head when did that start really oh, setting in with you 2014 is when i looked into it i hated it uh i clicked I remember I was I was conspiracy bored. I looked at just about every conspiracy you could think of and I remember there was a video recommended to me and they've been recommended to me for probably four or five months at that point. And I remember clicking on it and the first one I clicked on I actually had a visceral response. I actually got embarrassed. And I was sitting in a house by myself in Boulder, Colorado and going, Why am I getting flushed? Clicking on a flat earth video. Look, I've been in the internet a long time. There's a lot of weird stuff out there. Nothing's embarrassed me until this point. And then I followed up on a few more and I said, well, this is, this is silly. Flat Earth is ridiculous. Everybody knows this. Flat Earth is, has been disproven forever. If not 500 years, then a couple thousand years, depending on who you talk to. Mm -hmm. So I said, all right, okay. I can knock this thing out in a weekend. It's not on my bucket list, but I'm going to make it on my bucket list. And nine months later, I'm about to break a keyboard over my head because I can't prove the globe anymore. I can't do it. I don't know why I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it anymore. I, I mean, yeah, you could you could sort of get there, but there'd be too many loose threads, too many unanswered questions. And so I made a series of videos called Flat Earth Clues, and I said, okay, uh, Internet Hive Mind, tell me where I went wrong. I can't prove the, the globe anymore. Here's my ideas. And I didn't use any math, very little science. I just connected a whole bunch of dots. I said, if this is true, or this is true, and this is true, or these weird things connect together, and they all point towards us living in some sort of enclosed structure, some snow globe, some Truman show, then where did I go wrong? And that was in the beginning of 2015. And then everything just opened up. I had everybody calling me. And the media and the general public was one thing, but the subject matter experts, that's what threw me. All branches of the military, pilots, engineers, 
uh, air traffic controllers, everybody that had to do with, with transportation, surveyors, uh, they all said the same thing. They, they kept calling and saying, you know what? You may not be that crazy because we've heard of the curvature of the earth and we've heard of the spin of the earth. We never use it, ever. It's just something in a book that we just never use. It's, it's a chart, maybe, that we, that we see when we're rookies. And we're all told, it's like, yeah, you don't have to sweat it. It's that you'll never... You are, you are you a religious person? No. Well, I wasn't. Let's put it this way. I was, I was raised born again Christian, but then when I got into tech, I taught okay. proprietary software for 20 years. I, I, didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't go to church for probably 25 years. But this, tur this brought me back to, I'm not going to say the same place that I was when I left, because I was really naive. I mean, I grew up thinking there was literally only one religion before I went to university. But when I got okay. into this, um, because of the default shape of it, it, it screams some sort of creator. Now, in that point, you're just splitting hairs. It's like, okay, because you go one of two ways. It's either, either a very advanced old civilization that's much more powerful than ourselves, or it's Santa Claus on a Sunday morning in a giant white bathrobe. This... Well, the, re the reason I ask is because I have a friend who uh, delved into the flat earth stuff for a little bit, and he uh, almost... I wouldn't say exclusively, but a good part of that was based off of his religious beliefs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, At least. And him believing in God and him believing in, um, in uh, you know, yeah. a higher power. It, and so it directly tied into the things that he believed as far as Christianity goes yep. somehow. Yeah, and, and that, um, I see that a lot. Uh, At least half of our community, at least half are strong Christians. I can't speak for a lot of the countries. I can tell you the United States and Canada, quite a bit of Europe, the, you know, it's, it's at least half Christian. Um, the other four major religions all play a part though. I mean, um, uh, Islam and, and Judaism, you know, share some of the same stories. Buddhism and Hinduism, not as much, but they're in it because they, they, you know, mostly I think for revenge against science, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, the Christianity has the, has the upper hand though, compared to the other four, because there's a lot of um, chapter and verse and stories that tie to, they, they all point to the same thing, which is some, you know, that's some flat created world. I mean, heck, the, the, not, not to quote chapter and verse, because I won't for this show, but the Tower of Babel alone, uh, you know, where's that tower going? If it's on a spinning ball, it's just this stick stuck into an orange that's just spinning wildly through space. It's not, there's no bridge to heaven there. But if it's an enclosed system, it's only going one place and that's up. So, so it's, and I didn't even look into it. Honestly, I made the first eight, nine clues and I didn't even touch on religion. And then the Christian community started emailing me in mass and they said, oh, you better, you better stop dancing around. You better start, you know telling us you know give us your opinion on this and then i looked into it and you know made a couple i did not quote a single chapter and verse and next thing you know uh i have bible literalists that are creating brand new channels and brand new websites and and really really getting into it so yeah your friend is not alone by by a long stretch yeah i think i think he eventually kind of backed out of it um but it seemed like through his uh kind of I don't know, um, need to understand and believe that uh, there's something bigger out there that we don't understand and that th that it was created. Um, I don't I don't know how to say this the best way uh, that the earth was created in a much different way than man sees it. And it was created in a way that uh, a higher power could kind of control humanity. And sure. I, I don't know. Yeah, no, no. I, it's, I, I, no, he's you're, you're right on with that. No, that's 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 pretty much it, which is you're talking about again. You know, if what I kind of joke and I'm, I'm not trying to be glib here when I say this. It, fine. It may not be God who built this place. Uh, he may have subcontracted out the work. And if whoever it is isn't, you know, isn't divine, well, maybe they're, they're at least one step closer to having God's phone number than we do. So, right. And, and, I, and yes, you're absolutely right. There's this sense of purpose. One of the other big reasons why uh, religion really plays a huge factor into this is because it brings purpose right back to you. Instead of science saying that you're this tiny little pebble that's flying through an impossible universe and can be snuffed out at any time, you're just an accident 
part of a, a mm-hmm. giant cosmic explosion, your life means nothing. Instead of that, it's the exact opposite. You're in some sort of building that was built just for you. And yeah. you are the subject of this place. You are, you know, you're being watched. You're being, uh, I don't know if looked after is the word, but you're definitely being analyzed. And who, who knows, you're being judged. Uh, but it's it's an interesting place, but it, it makes it much more personal. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people that, I mean, I've seen people brought to tears. And and I know that eventually I'm, I'm going to catch some, some grief because, you know, some people are trying to tie it to like a religious cult in some way. But it's like, no, right. it's right. you're not. It's going to be tough to do because we don't have a Bible, we don't have robes, we don't chant, we have no compound, no right. like that. It's just everywhere. Everyone, it's all online. It's all social media. So you can't throw yourselves off the edge of the earth yet. No, right? no. Even though um, when when our cruise for 2020 was announced, uh, which is basically just a social cruise, it, you know, because we have conferences now, and the conference this year was in. De- it's supposed to be in Dallas, and the conference next year is supposed to be in Miami. You know, on a cruise boat immediately the media jumped on it and said, oh, they're going to take a cruise out to the edge of the earth. I'm like, really? From Miami? They were gonna, you know how long a trip that would be in a freaking <laughs> cruise boat? They wouldn't even have the gas to get... So how many people show up to those kind of things? Oh, hundreds. Hundreds. Uh, it's, uh, it's an amazing uh, experience for a lot of them because it's the first time they've been... And I know you, you don't know much about it. Uh, um, the Behind the Curve documentary followed the first one in Raleigh. Uh, in, okay. in 27 I know about it I haven't seen it but uh, yeah, yeah I know about it for sure it, it was ama- it's amazing because there's a lot of people that are, are really just excited to be in a room with other people that aren't going to judge them and like anything I kind of treat I hate to sit, use this comparison but it's kind of like being in a happy AA meeting if there is such a thing right where, or, or like a brony convention uh, is it similar yeah, to that? Kind of, where people are, people, people are <laughs> it's kind of like part, part Star Trek convention part Comic Con part uh, part UFO. I know it's there's a lot of things wrapped. Well, you, go ahead. You know, I, one thing I can say about it, and uh, I don't believe in it at all. Sure. I don't. I don't. I I don't go that far with it. Right. I know there's lots of conspiracies. There's lots of conspiracies I'll latch on to for a little bit and try to figure out more about. But uh, the flat Earth thing has never really stuck with me. But I, I will tell you one thing. If there's people that will follow it and they they don't feel alone in it, go for it. It's, if it's not hurting anybody, I don't care. I really don't give a shit, you know. Like I don't think it's hurting anybody either. I, I mean, really, we've had hundreds of regional meetups and more conferences than I can count. But I mean, you'll you'll have if if you have extremists of any stuff of any sort in flat earther uh, mindset. I think the most extreme you can go is actually and set out and try to find the boundaries, which you'd have to go to probably what Antarctica, right? Is yeah, that is that, that would be one accurate? Of the places, so you go yes. to Antarctica, yep. and so that would be an extremist way of kind of I'm going to find out what this is all about. You go to Antarctica. Well, I mean, science is doing the same thing. Right. Science is the more the more extreme uh, end of science is sending everybody out to Antarctica to kind of find the. Um, like the edge of existence, of what what we can survive on. So I would say even to that extent, if people start saying, "Oh, well, I'm going to go to Antarctica to see the edge of the Earth," that extreme isn't. Uh, I, I still don't think it's really hurting anybody. Like I said, science is already I, doing. I it. agree. Uh, we're They're already sending people to the bottom of of the ocean. Where where things got a little ugly for us recently was mm-hmm. during the Behind the Curve documentary, for example. There was a, um, at the conference in Raleigh, and this was back two years ago now, uh, there, well, not a year and a half, where uh, okay. there was a 12-year-old kid who walked up to the microphone and was asking me questions, and he was, okay. he was on our side, and at that point, the directors and producers uh, turned against us. At that point, it was just going to be a human interest piece, and they right. said, okay, it's all fun and games until you, you, know, you get the kids involved. And, and it's like, okay, uh, first, we're not marketing the kids. You know, we, we've got no special program. We're not Joe Camel. We don't have any special children's right. books out there. Uh, right. And as far as that goes, it's like, okay, first off, uh, kids are always more pliable when it comes to anything. You know, they're more accepting uh, to just about any ideas that are out there. So that's where the, the, sci- the, the scientists are ha- and the scientific groups like National Geographic and Discovery Channel and um, History Channel, they're having problems. With it because they, right. they're asking questions like, okay, what happens if this gets out of control? 
what happens? You do, well, I don't know. Do you, you know, do you all, do you all of a sudden start attacking sides? What happens to medicine? Well, I mean, seriously, you're asking these questions. They left it out of the interview. What happens to technology? What happens to medicine? What happens to our civilization as we know it? Could you be ushering in a new dark ages? I'm going, wow, that's some pretty heavy stuff. <laughs> and I don't know. I mean, we, we seem to be a pretty happy bunch. I, let me, let me put it this way. I've never seen a conspiracy this positive before. Meaning uh, every other conspiracy is, is dark and brooding. You know, conspiracy people usually like their conspiracies like like they uh, like um, Heath Ledger Batman type thing. You know, dark and gritty and talk like I'm gargling marbles. But Well, at the, at the end of it, always, it always turns out to be something apocalyptic. Well, in most in most in, in most conspiracy theories. Oh, yeah, say, yeah, well, yeah. If this comes out, then it's the end of the world, you know? Well, and, that, and that's screwed that's, or this is screwed. That, religion screwed. Humanity. Screwed. That's what I kind of joked about with in, in the title of my book. It was called Flat Earth Clues End of the World, which mm -hmm. gets into the whole problem because science is treating this. And of course, again, they're trying to protect. Uh, you used a pun. I, you, you said end of the world. I get it now. Yeah, you get it. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah and I yeah you, you know where I was going with this and and I I I understand where they're coming from I do because there is a threat to this and there's not going to be you know there's going to be a loser in any type of thing but I'm saying that this has opened up the minds of a lot of people to accept a lot of ideas they wouldn't have even thought if you can get your head around flat earth you don't I mean if you're really into flat earth you don't judge anybody for anything anymore you'll look at any conspiracy. You'll question, right. you'll question everything, that makes and, sense. and so far it's been really positive. We have a, like for example, we have people. Find me another conspiracy where you make happy, happy songs about it. We have a. Do you think the Holocaust ha happened or not? <sighs> right, really? We can talk about that. Um, the I I do, I do think the Holocaust happened. Okay. Do okay. I know the numbers? that that were involved no i don't because both sides okay. are going to like anything it's no different than i i don't want to diminish this in any way it's it's kind of like politicians okay. where they say well you know 51 percent voted for this and 49 percent for this do we know the actual numbers no but what we can't agree Never. on is they had their own camps and that you kind of got to look into and i don't know how old you are but remember the the, the old television show hogan's heroes with uh yeah they, of course yeah, yeah okay yeah. they had everybody in the same freaking camp right you know they had the italian mm -hmm. and, the, and the french guy and the british guy the, the jewish people had their own camps and the the there was there was a problem there and i i want to quote there was a movie called um the debt i think what it was called it was, okay. it was a it was an israeli film that was turned into an american movie and there was this quote and i'm not picking right there's this quote by okay. when they were arresting. It was based on a true story where they were hunting down a German officer in the 60s from the camps. And I can't believe they actually wrote this into the script. And he, he goes, he goes, you want to know why we did it? You know, along these lines, he goes, he goes, a thousand prisoners. And we held you with four guards. And he goes, <laughs> he, he goes, and nobody, okay. and he goes, nobody fought back. Nobody made a break for it. Nobody was willing to lay down their lives for somebody else. No one was, you know, there was obvious, you know, four guards. You don't have nearly enough bullets. Even if you emptied everything and hit everybody perfectly, you could totally overrun it. And nobody did it. And he was basically saying that they were too passive. If you're that passive, you don't deserve to be here. And so at that point, I'm going, okay, that's a little heavy stuff. And I, you know, that, and I come from a, I come from a German family and it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I, I see exactly the, the logic he's using there. So did it happen? Do I think it happened? Yes, I do. Do we, are we ever going to know the exact numbers? No, we are not. Uh, because nobody's, no. you know, everybody's got a stake in it and, and you know, some people want to diminish it. I mean, hell, you want to go that far. Uh, the, the series that just came out recently, which I loved so much, uh, Chernobyl. Uh, you know, which talked about the whole five part series about the British production about the, the Chernobyl disaster. You watch that thing, you know full well that hundreds of thousands of people died horribly, you know, in, in slow, mm -hmm. agonizing ways. And the official death mm -hmm. count, even today, even though the Soviet Union is gone, the official death count is 31. And that's because the Soviets wanted to save face. It's like we didn't create, you know, right. create this thing. They, they literally cordoned up the exclusion zone is something like 2,800 square miles still to this day and it's like no 31 people that's it that's all it died it's like you, you're watching you're watching this go you know full what the, the troops alone that they killed now granted they didn't drop dead right there but they irradiated all now of them. chernobyl the what you said you said in tr during chernobyl during the meltdown right oh yeah 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 the the meltdown from 1986 is it's a brilliant if anyone hasn't seen it seriously find find a series it's on hbo 
<coughs> where now go ahead now Fuku, Fukushima uh, where there were no reported casualties correct is no that, yeah that's a uh, whole other thing which is and, I don't think anybody and, actually was reported yeah. as a casualty yep now the long-term effects are different but yeah. that's a, that's a whole different story uh, there are no reported immediate casualties right. from Fukushima and, and the Japanese want to save face more than you know as much as anybody in fact even more honor is so important to them and so so you don't think you th- you think that there were actual immediate casualties in Fukushima oh god yes there had to be you you going they yeah they evacuated heck i had a cousin that was living over in uh, Tokyo and she was an american well she is an american and she got out of there i mean she had two girls and her husband they moved immediately they got the okay. hell out of Dodge, and, and that was like it, people that were over there on work visas and doing this stuff. Anybody, you know, they're like, because remember, you know, the Chernobyl thing had already happened. We are, we know what's going on there. They're like, yeah, it doesn't matter what, the, you know, they evacuated towns. Were there, were there immediate casualties? Sure. But that's not the big thing. The big thing is the long-term effects, which is. You know, Let me ask you this. Yeah. Because this is what this is why I'm asking you. Me and my friend were actually talking about this and the benefit of nuclear energy, yeah. and um, what we were kind of getting going back and forth about is um, like you know coal mining and coal uh, things powered by coal have have had a lot more casualties throughout the years than nuclear energy ha- has. Uh, there's a lot, a lot more tragedies that have happened because of coal mining and immediate uh, casualties because of coal mining. And uh, we were kind of tossing back and forth, like, in the long run, is nuclear energy going to be uh, a sustainable, less, um, less dangerous, more safe, alternative or, or you know main source of energy as compared to coal energy yeah um and what we were kind of kind of getting at is that it's a relatively young um technology yeah. nuclear energy is and the there's only been a very few amount of what you would call tragedies from nuclear power plants sure. that have happened sure. so um, and with coal it's obvious it's, it it's something that happens all the time yeah. um, so I don't know if do you think that nuclear energy is is beneficial if you if you count out all the use of nuclear energy for weapons and everything if you could talk about nuclear power plants do you think that that's a more it's a cleaner more efficient safer it, uh if it yeah no i got you i got energy you. if it was me than anything else it, uh, it, you're talking short term versus long term which is of course right. uh short term coal you know has has their problems as well i mean i mean they belch a lot of stuff at, well coal was coal was just the beginning yeah. of it coal was just a just a part of it if but we, in the in, in the bigger scale the, um the, you know is nuclear energy really really that much safer no no it's not i in fact i would treat it if i had to do it over again you know if i if i was a high-ranking member of whatever power th- structure you want to you want to say i yeah. would i would ban i would treat nuclear um, weapons and power plants, fission and fusion, uh, the same as I do biological weapons. Uh, an interesting idea, okay. but you you don't want to use it. Uh, I would ban it. You know, no different than I don't want to use a Star Trek reference necessarily, but do a, a complete ban on everything along those lines. Because remember, it started out as weapons, and then we said, oh yeah, we could also turn it into into power plants. But the only reason mm. the power plants happened was right. because of the weapons program. Exactly. So exactly. no, no, I wouldn't because, like, for example, if if you watch the uh, the thing on Chernobyl, they literally accidentally the Soviets because they did it on the cheap, right? They they copied us and they made a cheap version, a uh, big shock in the eighties. I mean, they're much better at it now, uh, but back then they made a cheap copy of our plants, and it had a it had a problem. There was a design flaw that it could turn it into a bomb. Now, not a bomb that you would you know expect like a Hiroshima Nagasaki type bomb. But a, right. um, a bomb that we we talk about, but again, is not used, uh, which was we created in the late 70s, called the neutron bomb. 
which was all radiation and almost no blast. This thing blast wise, I mean, there are IEDs out there that are 10 times what this thing did in terms of blast. But the radiation right. it released was far worse than any than a whole series of neutron bombs. Um, so that one mistake, I hate to say it, you know, that one mistake cost them. In fact, it was a great quote, actually, before um, uh, Gorbachev died in 2006. And I knew this when I was watching it. I, in fact, it was really, really cool for me because I was watching this and the logistics, just the cleanup and all the money they spent trying to get. You know, remember, even now they didn't solve it. They just put a big dome around it it's not it's still there um that just the logistics and the money and the manpower because every it was just a it was just a black hole of funds because everything you used had to be discarded and and, and set out into fields and never to be touched again i, I was going right. i was going you know what I go, this right here, this is the reason why there isn't a Soviet Union anymore. And G Gorbachev, at the end of the movie, there was this quote, and Gorbachev in 2006 says, just so you know, this was probably the main reason why the Soviet Union folded in five years later, was because it cost us so much, so much in resource-wise, we couldn't recover. Oh, wow. We couldn't recover from it. And so, to your point, no, I mean, if that one accident broke down an entire, you know, the, the East version of the United States... Just broke right, it down. Right. Imagine, and we've got, oh, God, how many? This is something, by the way, in disaster movies. Not, and I do have to go eventually, but I want to get this out because uh, I'm getting talked. Go ahead and do this. Yeah, well, no, but, yeah and then I'm going to listen to some badass music after okay, this. Good. But go ahead and get what you're Okay, what, which is this. And because and, I wrote a survival manual uh, a few years ago after Katrina uh, because there's all these okay. people that came back from Katrina after the entire city evacuated and nobody prepped. I was going, are you in right. code? What the hell? You guys were literally, you know, national guarded out of the city, you know, and, and you're not going to print, you're not, no, no water, no, no food. So the, what something that, uh, what I try to tell people is like, look, if there's a huge, massive power outage, if the grid goes down, there is something like, was it 30? 30 plants just on the i think it's 30 i can't remember to be sure i'd have to look it up 30 30 nuclear power plants just east of the mississippi you know i mean just you know most of them right. are on you know that's where most of the population is east of the mississippi if those things melted down and a lot of them will if you don't have maintenance if you'd have don't have con let's say there was just an earthquake you know like the fukushima types thing if, right, if right. even 10 of those things go critical and you know all the weather moves to the east which we have one in arkansas too yeah yeah it's it's yeah. a big deal i mean i yeah i get it it's pennies on the dollar in terms of power versus what you're spending but you're rolling the dice on something that's really 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 dangerous i mean it's like working it's like i, I can of imagine it's like uh lab scientists working in a biological area where you know all the viruses are you know where you, you drop a vial and that's it you know everybody dies yeah yeah and yeah it's like how many times can you cross the room with those vials without somebody dropping them it's it's only a matter of time so no i if i had to do it over again i'd, I'd ban the whole thing and and just treat it it's like no nuclear power and, and i get it I, i'm not a hippie or anything like that and i used to laugh it's yeah. like no nukes no nukes you know the signs and yeah but no nowadays after after watching chernobyl the series, it, seriously, I consider it a horror movie, the scariest horror movie I've ever yeah, watched. It's a shit that is, show. You'll you'll yeah. never look at nuclear power the same way again. And this is not a, a propaganda movie. This is about no, uh -huh. what 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 goes wrong and what c countries will do to save face to the world. And anyway, so there you go. All right, All right Mark. Well, my my name is Ryan. Hi. I do bad news radio. Cool. It was nice to meet you. They told me they were talking to you. You did some conspiracy stuff and flat earth <laughs> stuff. And uh, he said he's been having a conversation with you. Oh, cool. So I was like, oh, let me jump on. All right. I'll go. I'll go here. I'll, I'll have a conversation. Sure. I used to do this all the time when I first started my show. Um, it's kind of gotten away from that a little bit. But I've been doing it for a couple of years. Cool. And I have, a I have a couple friends who are very involved in, in different kind of um, things. Um, I have some, some people that even, you know, they believe in the reptilians and oh, sure. all that kind of thing. So I, I've had all kinds of people on here. Nice. So I was like, oh man, this would be, this would be great. Right. Um, which I don't necessarily, like I say, the flat earth thing, not my thing, whatever. whatever. But, uh, I figured if you, do, if you, uh, 
had a say in the flat earth thing, you probably had some things to say on some other, oh, yeah, yeah, other yeah. issues I, too. I, I love a lot of different conspiracies and uh you know, there's but I look at it from the other side of the table. I try to see it. It's like, okay, why are they doing this? It's not just the cons- I, everyone says, oh, conspiracies are evil, and they point at the bad men. And I try to say, no, no, there's something else. They're, usually it's done for what they consider to be the greater good. And right. unfortunately, right. the greater good isn't what you would agree with. And, you know, it's the whole exactly. And it's like, I get it. I get it. Would I do the same thing? Eh, I don't know. I don't know. But we'll see. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Well, Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you can call anytime. Okay, thanks, man. Um, yeah, have a good night. I'm gonna play some cool music. Okay. Thanks for talking. Okay. Um, yeah, have a good one. <laughs> have a good one. See ya. <laughs>